Oh shoot, I forgot to I forgot to turn the YouTube video off. We're gonna get feedback. All right, guys, we are live. As you notice, we got two extra folks here with us. It's all backwards. Um, this is my brother down here. There we go. Mark. Hello. And my brother in law, Joe. Hello. Uh, Joe, Joe's a little technic technic technologically uh what do you call it? Technologically what? Behind, he's learning. So he, what, I mean, he's Amish. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we are going to try to do this tonight. I'm gonna wait a few minutes to make sure everybody gets in here. We'll go over the rules and shit like that. But uh, a good portion of what we're now, my stuff is my normal, uh, regular, everyday fare, what you guys normally see every week. But uh, Mar Joe's just sitting in this week. I think you're gonna join us next week for actual auctioning. Yes, I am. Going to try anyway. I'm going to try. He's never, this is both of your uh, YouTube debuts, isn't it? Yeah. He's never been. Never I have been. never done an auction on YouTube at all. So. All right. So neither one of you ever been live on YouTube. No, I've, I've been live, but only for other things. <laughs> oh, yeah. But can I tell them what you do? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, both Mark and Joe work together there in construction, but. Uh, uh, Joe, as you can tell, is former Amish. He he decided to wear his uh, Amish garb tonight. But Mark is a musician and has performed in front of how many? What's the most you've performed in front of? Three hundred fifty thousand in yeah. Woodstock, Poland. <laughs> Pretty great. So yeah. Uh, so Mark's not uh, uh, a stranger to being on stage. It looks like looks like we have a four or five second delay tonight. So that's not horrible. Um, I do have the. Uh, the regular YouTube chat pulled up, so we'll be good to go on the when the bids come in. So we're going to give it a few more minutes. Uh, we're we're going to talk a little bit about where a lot of this stuff came from. A lot of the stuff you're selling tonight, right, Mark? Yeah, I think almost all of it, except for so, uh, I have some hats I'm going to sell. Okay. That are not. So so Joe and Mark were what you guys were working one day and came across an auction. How'd that how'd that go? Well, I actually was going to pick material up. We were doing, we were putting a floor in, and this is actually what a week ago, I believe. Yeah. It was, um, and about three thirty in the afternoon, I had to run and get a little bit more uh, trim for the job. And and I just noticed a uh, an estate auction, real estate and estate auction, um, just down the road from the lumber store, and I. When I got back to the job, I was like, hey, Joe, there's an auction. We should go. And we got there within the first 10 minutes. I mean, they were selling this stuff quick because it was a junk auction. And I, I that, those are my favorite kind because those are where you find the treasures that nobody mm -hmm. wants, you know, because they're, got, they're, uh, they're not ready-made antiques or they're not ready-made, you know, resell items. You kind of got to dig through it. But that's kind of what we uh, – that's kind of our specialty. So I, I told Joe, I was like, Hey, we should go to do this. And I think both of us had all this stuff planned, but uh, I'm glad we did because in the first 10 minutes, uh, we both scored tons of really cool stuff. And then say about what, 20 minutes in Joe? About, we, a, half hour in, about a half hour in they sold the, they just going to sell the contents. Yeah. And, and, and then, that was crazy because we, we were standing there not prepared for it. I don't think anybody was. So we hurried up and ran in the house uh, to check it out and go ahead joe and i don't know the auctioneer said he's gonna sell all contents and i'm like give me one minute went inside yeah. the house back out and ended up buying all the contents in the house uh -huh. yeah it was a really cool find i mean yeah. so found, the entire yeah. contents you bought the entire contents of the of the house now, how much perfect. stuff would you say was in there <laughs> how many days did it take you guys to clean that out Four, well, three, three and a half days, three and a half days, I'd say we was, we was all done, you know, but, uh, I mean, we found tons of savings bonds, we found coins, we found gold, we found, we found a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah, a lot of these, these uh, 16 millimeter cine projector, you know, early, you know, 1940s projectors, a lot of old eight millimeter film. That's still good. Some of the canisters were a bit of rough, but stuff like that. Uh, it's amazing that, that it exists and, and it didn't get destroyed um, or thrown away by the family. Right. Um, so. Well, that house you said sat for 10 years. 
and yeah. the family didn't take this stuff. Yeah, I no. think they got sick of paying the taxes. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to guess. But the power was still on. That was weird. The power in the house was still on. Just the electric. Just the electric was on. Everything else was shut right. off. Which, which I don't know if it was all on because the refrigerator was full of food that was pretty, pretty raunchy smelling. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's all just right, a bonus. So that's gonna, a bonus of picking. Yeah. Well, Joe, when I showed up there the one day, oh, I, why the hell did you even do it? Open the fucking refrigerator. Because Holy people, Lord. people, people hide money in old yeah. refrigerators. No, that didn't. Well, was there any money in there? Uh, no. no, but it was worth it. It was worth it was worth the experience. <laughs> no, it was not. Let's just was say horrible, let's man. just let's just say that he cleaned the refrigerator out with a flat shovel. Yeah, that, that I did. That I did. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get started. Um, first, I'm gonna say hi to a few people in the chat. Uh, first person in the chat was me. Uh, I win. Uh, then she sells by Sue. Uh, uh, Sue, are you gonna be on in the morning? I'd like to know. Uh, Sue still needs your prayers and uh, thoughts. Uh, so please make sure you keep remember her. Um, Bearded Picker, of course, is here. Um, Steven Strait, uh, never too old. Uh, AB Dragons, AB Dragons is here. Uh, I can't, what is that? Mark, Mara, I can't, uh, Mara Catch, I think, seven is here. Mary Pilter and Big Boss Man. So, uh, if you're not in the chat, or if you are here and not in the chat, come on and say hi to us. So we're going to go over the rules real quick. Uh, same as always. There's no registration. We try not to have a starting number on a bids, no starting bids. Uh, so you, this is an absolute auction. If it gets a bid, it gets sold. So remember that. Please, uh, whoever's auctioning, so tonight Mark and I will both be selling. So if you win something from me, make sure you pay slicktoys at yahoo.com. If you win something from Mark, uh, paypal.me dot mark code or slash mark code. Make sure whoever you bought it from is where you send the money to. Uh, Joe will not be auctioning tonight, so you don't have to send any money to him. You can send his money to me. Well, um, if you want to donate, uh, feel free to donate to me as well. It's, yeah. I don't mind. We're okay with that. Um, also... The when you send your PayPal payments, make sure please to re repeat what you bought in the notes section. Your real name, if it doesn't show up on your PayPal, but just put it in there anyway. And of course, your address. We had a few last week that didn't have all that stuff in there, and I had the email, and it did go through. So we can get a hold of you uh, if that happens. But that's pretty much the rules. There's no no other rules. Uh, Mark is new at this. So he may take a couple of extra moments to send your packages out, but he'll get through it. He's not new to shipping, so he does know that side of things, but he is new to the YouTube and the uh, PayPal auction stuff. Yeah, yeah I've so. done I've done worked in merchandise for many years, obviously with rock and roll bands. So very, very used to shipping. I just, uh, I'm going to lean on Steve for a few of these auctions just to make sure I'm doing it right. And I did. I did tell him about pirate ship. Uh, make Mark when you when you send your uh, when you buy your labels on pirate ship. Usually in their PayPal payments, there will be an email address. If you put that in the top, for, well, I'll, I'll walk you through it later. But yeah. it will also send them the tracking and all that stuff, so you won't have to worry about all that. So. Cool. You guys ready? I'm ready. All yeah. right. You you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Go first. You. <laughs> it's your it's your show. All right. So last week. We had an unfortunate event of no internet. <laughs> it's what I was in the middle of auctioning the uh, the jerseys. So we're going to go ahead and start with those. Uh, I think we got we were at fifteen, and then every uh, it all went to hell. Pat, what's up, man? Thanks, Pat. Um, so Mark and Joe, you're not probably not familiar with super chats on YouTube. This I don't know if you can see it yet, but I see Pat D's sent five dollars, and that's just as a thank you. Pat D's is from Philadelphia. He's a good dude. He was with me on the very first auction I did on my channel. He's the one okay. who called the bids out for me. Pat okay. is a super dude. And uh, thanks, Pat. I tell you every time, though, Pat, you don't got to do that. So, But that's a basically a donation. So, anyway, yeah. so we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, again, this is what Buffalo's team is what? Sabres? Sabres. Sabres, okay. This is Buffalo Sabres. It's a uh, jersey. There is no name on the back. It's just a... Uh, 
just a jersey, but it is all sewn. This is a big patch. We'll see if I can get it up there. I'm, I'm going to move the microphone so you guys can hear me better. There we go. Well, Stephen, we got a lot of hats tonight. So Robert Bowman's in it. Five. Anyway, so this is a patch. This is made by Reebok, and it is a adult medium. So I don't know if you see that. The lighting still isn't right here. I'm still going to have to figure this out. Hey, Rick. Uh, I ran into Rick at his yard sale this week. So Rick is a good dude, too. And uh, included in the auction will also be this uh, 1984 USA jersey. Oh, that's this cool. All, it's all screen printed, but it is cool. Uh, it says oh, USA God, 1984 there. But on the back, it says chock full of nuts. So it's a promotional giveaway. So those are the two jerseys you're going to get in this auction. Nothing super special, but it's pretty cool anyway. Uh, if you're a Buffalo Sabres fan, anyway. So we're at twelve dollars with Mary. Bargain resell is at fifteen. Because you know this is a patch. This is a patch. You look in pretty good shape. No, I, I don't buy junk. Well, no, I'm just saying they don't look like. Five MBPS, holy lord! So again, nothing on the back, but that's what you're going to get. Those two jerseys, and we're right back to where we left off last week. Fifteen dollars. Yeah, the uh, I've had some of those Reebok jerseys in the past. Those are the better ones. Uh, I do not have them currently. Yellow is not their normal colors. I don't know. I don't understand why it's yellow like that, but it is what it is. Can I go full screen? Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. I'm a rookie. Let's see if I can remember how. Uh, for some reason, it's not letting me go full screen. Give me a second. There it is. There we go. Is that better? All right. There you go. Chocolate nuts. USA 1984. When this is made by Reachwear. It's an adult large made in Cincinnati, Ohio. And then the other one was, of course, the shiny Buffalo Sabres. Pat D is in at $20. I should pull the microphone over so you guys can hear me a little better. Pat D is in at $20. Bucks. Mary, you're in at $17, but Pat's in at $20, so you're going to have to go a little bit higher. Again, it's a Reebok. Uh, try to show the tag. All right, got these in at twenty bucks. We're gonna go once. That's caught me itching my nose. I wasn't picking it. I promise. <laughs> We're gonna go twenty dollars once to Pat. Jeez, I can't keep the microphone up tonight. See it? Sounds like a personal problem. It is. <laughs> have to get this you. Is, have to get you in contact with the sure guy. This is a family yeah. show. <laughs> Not a family show. All right, bargain resell is out, so we're gonna go twenty dollars twice to Pat. They make pills for that. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> What's that? I said everybody knows you, right? <laughs> yeah. Most of the people in the chat have followed me for a while, so good to go here. And they they know. They know. You tell these people I ain't no different on YouTube than I am in real life. All right, we're going to sell this one to Pat. Sold. Pat D's. 20 bucks. That was a good buy. All right, Pat, you know the you know the drill. I don't have to explain it to you. All right, I'm going to get I'm going to pull you up, Mark. Okay. If I can figure out how, I, I'm trying. Here we go. I don't know how to do it the right way, so there you go. <laughs> All right. Ready? Ready for your very first ever YouTube auction? I'm ready. I'm so ready. All right. Good luck. All right. Well, so I've got a, a paper lot today. Um, the cool part about Lyle's house, which is the house that we picked, um, is that Lyle uh, was really into 
he was really into the get rich scheme. He was really into whatever he could do to make money. And he was, uh, he was a collector of all the pamphlets over time. So he never got rid of anything. And he actually had cataloged it all in filing cabinets. And we were able to go through it. And like I said, we found, um, we found some savings bonds in there and we found some other things. And that was pretty cool. But some of the stuff, uh, that I thought was cool was the advertising because I went to school for graphic design after high school. Um, and I'm kind of, I'll always be attracted to that. So that was the first thing that I thought. Um, so I'll show you some of these that we got pretty cool. Um, let's you know, Mark, approximately how many pieces are in there? I think I counted this one. I can count it real quick. One, two, three. I think about, I put about 20 in each. Uh, All right. About, I'll count them up, but uh, Pat, start. Pat uh, I did get your payment. We're good to go. So these are, this lot here is mainly instruction manuals um, for various things. Um, and it's all from the 1950s to very early 80s, but mostly 1960s, as far as I can tell. Um, there's things like preparing food for your freezer. Um, it's really cool because of all, I mean, it's, Everything is in pristine. It was in fi a filing cabinet. Um, there's things like the Lloyd Automatic or Automic 200 Microelectric. I actually have this. Oh, that's actually pretty cool, right there. Yeah, I have this calculator. How many? Um, how many of those are still around? The the manuals, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and this one is in mint condition. It has not ever been. If, I don't know if it ever saw the light of day, other than when it was purchased. Yeah, so, generally um, manuals do the minimum minimum ten dollars plus shipping on eBay. yeah and and uh there are there are some things with some of these manuals he did write in a few of them but there's not much writing in it but again this is pristine stuff i do have that calculator upstairs i just realized um, i got two of these pony tr citizen band transceiver catalogs now he was in world war ii and as far as i could tell he was a in in the air force um, I have some of his paperwork down here that I'm still trying to go through to make sure. Um, I thought I had World War II stuff, but it's, there's actually some World War I uh, stuff that they gave to the troops as they were arriving because most of them, as you can imagine, were kids when they were going. Yeah. Um, so they were basically familiarizing them with the world and they were giving them yeah. maps. Um, so, but he, for the rest of his life, he was really into uh, CB radios and, uh, ham radios and stuff so that's that's actually what a lot of his paperwork was was that but it was cool that he kept these they're very good shape um again i don't think they saw the light of day yep. uh, it, like telescope pamphlets here's a here's a ge hot point i mean it's all oh, there cool. it's got to be 1960s i mean he didn't throw anything away this is this is a depression era guy i think because he uh or at least he grew up this is the mounting brackets for like the microwave or the mounting, uh, sorry, the, the t templates and stuff, all of the warranty and, and, uh, so that's all in that one book there or that one. Folder. Yeah. All in just one. So yeah, you could add that to the, the number, but it's, it's cool. Cause it's like 1960s or seventies vintage pictures all through it. And it's their full line for the catalog year. I was trying to find out what year it is. And I couldn't find it. I'm going to guess late 60s on this one. Sounds like a penny day lot to me. Yeah. Um, um, penny, day, penny day buys a lot of paper off me. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, here is a John Deere 25 instruction manual. This, I, I want to say, is, is cool. it's, it's a, little, a little rough. Um, as far as it's not like destroyed on the edges, but it's a little uh, faded on the front. But all of the yeah. inside stuff is is in pretty darn uh, decent shape. It's all of the schematics and. Mark, great congratulations! Guys. You got your very first YouTube auction bid at five dollars. Oh, cool, thank you. <laughs> um, a twelve-inch bandsaw uh, instruction manual, and I tried to see if this was a Sears Roebuck. It's not. I think this is a no-name. Um, he purchased it. Any day, isn't it ten? He purchased it and kept everything. I mean, literally, the receipt is in there. Alicia Shantz is in it. Smiley face hearts. Oh, there we go. 
Um, so Alicia. yeah, I mean, the, Alicia is Mark's wife, by the way. <laughs> the uh, the Sears and Roebuck gas-fired sectional furnaces. This actually is the furnace that was inside that house. So oh, he wow. kept it from the entire time. I mean, had to be 1950s on this yeah. one. Robert Bowman is in at 12. Um, what do we got here? I've got Delta Homecraft tools. This is actually two pieces. Actually. He had that big Delta saw in the garage, didn't he? Yeah, I think this was the owner's manual for it. Um, this one is in very good shape. Again, all of it's there. It's not missing Chris, anything. Chris the Goose is in at 20. It's not missing any papers. Uh, they're, they're meant for binders. So some things are loose, but they're actually, uh, you know, it's all in there. Um, and then these are the two, two cool pieces I thought personally. I'm super into history. As Joe knows and my brother Steve knows, I, I really like doing this because I like to learn about the history of things. And these are AT&T, uh, well, it's the American Telephone and Telegraph Company annual report for 1945. So this must have been for their investors. Mm -hmm. It is the perspective, prospectus and all of the breakdown. They didn't breakdown. call it AT&T. They, they used the full. Yeah, this is the Bell Systems, cool. you know. And the cream of the crop is the 19, or let's put it this way, December 1939, the telephone news for the Bell Telephone Company of Pennsylvania. I just sold, oh, wow, it's the Christmas version. The Christmas version of it. And this one is not just, it's not just text. This is like all of what their company. Yeah, uh, I just sold a lot of those on, I can't, it was a, a couple months ago. I sold four or five of those. Not that old though. And not a Christmas version. Yeah, I mean it's it's it goes it's very good. There's one page I saw in here that was uh, had a tear in it, but other than that, it's it's all there. I really wanted to take the time and read this one, but yeah. I wanted to have some cool stuff for the night. Penny Day so, is in at twenty five dollars. So this one's this one's pretty cool. So I'm gonna count these up. We got one, two, three. Seven. Still at 25 with Penny Day. 13, 13 manuals, but there's a lot of other you inserts. know inserts and stuff in there. So you're getting a pretty decent stack of vintage again. It looks like a this looks like an Eric Weber stack. Yeah. Oh, oh I saved I did I forgot about this one. And this one also was my when I saw it on the floor, Joe and I were going through these originally and I saw it on the floor. I was like that one. We've got to make sure we take this one. This is a shop Smith power tool. That's the saw that I remember. I think he had out in the garage. Yeah. Uh, he had one of these. Yeah. It was pretty bad shape, but anybody who doesn't know what a shop Smith is, which I'm sure everybody does, but shop Smith was the multi tool of its age or the tool for the, for the shop worker, you know, or the, the, the woodworker at home. So you would get your, your table saw, your jigsaw, your band saw, your, you know, all of it was in one thing. And the cool thing about this, again, this guy didn't throw anything away. All of the tag outs are on it. That's cool. In it. Right, it's we're amazing. Gonna, we're going to start counting this one down. Penny days in at 25. So we're going to go 25 once. If I can type. Yeah. All of these. What was what is that thing? So it's your it's your. Uh, oh gosh! That thing alone, I bet you just ha has a little bit of. Yeah. Uh, there's a little I bit. I mean, of how it. many of these survived? This is the right yeah. from it, right? It was never used. It's fully there. It's the speed selector, the RPM speed selector. So when you change the machine from a table saw to a jigsaw, you'd have to decrease the or take the the. So it's just a basic, basically a calculator for. Uh, yeah, how to, how to change it. It's a Tyler calculator. Picker just came in the chat. All right, we're gonna go twice on this, guys. It's an out. This one's cool. Points. I I really like this one. I know about three people who have this exact saw that would love this. If they're missing out, if they're not here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you share this video, Mark? I. Uh, Let me see if I, I can did not. Out of this back. There we go. I'm just trying to make it through this one. 
All right. Generally, I will flip between all three of us, but Mar Joe isn't going to get much screen time tonight, so I'll put all three of us on here. That's fine. That's fine. I don't. I just sit back and I watch. I learn here, you know. Yeah. Well, Joe. Uh, again, Joe picked. Joe and I picked a lot of this stuff together. So yeah, I came in. I came in as a consultant, I guess. Uh, yeah. I went through a bunch of that paperwork. Uh, seen all. I got to see it all. It was good. So we're going to sell it at UK with that, Mark. That's fine with me. Twenty-five dollars to Penny Day. All right. Cool. All right, I'm going to come up with another lot here. I might move the camera down a little. Thank you, Penny. I actually see what's going on. All right. That might be all right. And move the microphone so you guys can hear me. All right, this is postcards. There are 173. They are mostly modern. Oh, the sold, did the sold go through? I'm going to type it anyway. Sold. Okay. It didn't go I through. Didn't, I didn't. There it is. It, it came through now. Okay. Um, so Penny Day, of course, you know how to do this. PayPal.me, mark code. Uh, two C's yeah. in there. M-A-R-C-C-O-D-E. Penny's, yeah. Penny's really good at this. So, uh, Thank you, Penny. Thanks again. So we're going to we're gonna go ahead and go through these postcards. These are, I uh, better turn them around. Huh? These are all fair. Most of them are modern. There are some uh, linen cards in here as well. So we'll just go through a few of them. Uh, there's 173 cards in this lot. So you can see. That's the stack. So like your normal everyday fair for the most part. But there are some really cool ones in here. Just keep cod. You guys hear that? Car starting. No, no. your your mic is sounds a little far away. How's that? There you go. All right, I'll try it. I won't be able to say. <laughs> it says can't finds this person. Uh, that is your correct, Mark? Your correct PayPal? That is he's my having, correct he's PayPal. having trouble sending it to you. What is the email address? Uh, Callie, uh, 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 Callie Picker, unfortunately at this time, uh, we do not accept anything other than PayPal. PayPal is the easiest way for us to do this. Um, we could look into Venmo maybe for a future auction or something like that. Yeah. I'm sure you're familiar with Venmo, Mark. Yes, I don't have one right now, but I do. Okay. So if you could send uh, Penny the email that you use for that, Mark, for your PayPal. And maybe okay. you, maybe you can change it. Uh, let me see if I can figure out, remember how to change this. I think. That's the correct one. I don't know why it's not letting it send. Uh, used to be able to change it right here in the studio, but we'll we'll do it that way. Square or Cash App Silver works too. Unfortunately, we're not doing that right now, but we'll 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 consider it for the future for sure. Anyway, let's start going back through these. Penny, if, if Mark, can you post it right in the chat, or how do you want to do that? My email. Yeah, for Penny. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I don't know why it is not letting me. Sacramento. This is uh, Port St. Lucie, Florida. Ten dollars to Penny Day. Sand dollar. I think Mark, it works better if we do the email instead of the PayPal me thing. All right, I'll just change it to it on my. Kennedy I'll just change compound. it. You might have to go out and come back in if you want to change it on the screen here. It's letting. It's saying I can edit. Okay. So. There's a, just making sure there. I get it. Here's one of the linen cards. Is, uh, yeah, Penny Day and a ten dollars, Steve. Yep, I see that. Oh, let me get myself bigger. I keep forgetting. I'm used to doing this auction for my on my own and getting uh, remembering what to do here. There we go. Is that better? Remembering what to do here is a little off, but there's uh, some yeah. mountains. Yeah. This is Long's Peak. Most of these are going to be your normal, you know, seventies, eighties. I don't think there's anything past the eighties in here. Nice big elk, a nice big ram. This is Village Green Inn. I should probably get my blue snowball and put it right here on the table so that I don't have to worry about moving this Yeti around. But 
is the I, I see this postcard all the time. This Roadrunner. Oh, there's an airplane. This one is Santa Fe, New Mexico. Hundred and seventy-three cards. There's a train. This is DNR DNRG Narrow Gauge Railroad. This is uh, musical theater, uh, some sort of musical tower. I don't know. Some of these are used, not all of them. Pat D's is in at 15. There's another linen card. Never Too Old is in at 20. Penny, I put my email up there. I'm not sure if you can see that. When, when we go, I can actually... Switch back. Okay. Uh, hold on. Did it change it to the Mark Defiant? Mark nope. Defiant at yahoo.com. Yeah. M A R C D E F I A N T at yahoo.com. That's the, that's the, uh, what the paper different names do you got? Oh Mark my God. Code, no. Mark Defiant, Mark, whatever. You got to oh, keep guessing. Never too old. All right. I'm going to make myself big again. Uh, Penny, let us know if you got that. I'm learning here. Yeah, it works better, I think, with the the um, YouTube ad or the email address instead of. <clears throat> so you can see most of these are going to be your normal '70s, '80s stuff. Uh, these ones have the serrated edges. There are a couple of Christmassy ones in here. Uh, not super old there. So 20 with never too old. This one has a little chunk out of it. I got hungry. That's probably one of the oldest ones, 1961. There's also another one. This is a fairly, really old one. Um, but it also has a chunk. It actually looks like somebody took a big bite out of it. Uh, but this one has got Jesus on it. So we'll throw that one in for free. The two, the two torn ones there. Turf and Surf. There's another linen. So there are a few linens in here. There's another airplane. Another Christmassy one. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Twenty dollars still with never too old. They cut the stamp out. You're probably right, Pat. I don't know why you would, but uh, they wanted to collect the stamps. A lot of collect. Do you guys find any stamps in that house? I found a few. I'm trying to uh, linen. see what I again. It got put into a box. I'm trying to find it. I did see some. I think when I was there. Yeah, I think it was just a small little run. They were in an envelope, but they were yeah. stuck to the inside of the envelope. There's another Christmas one. This, this is super weird. Anyway, so that's what you get. We're going to go ahead and start counting this one down. $20 once. What is it? Pat D's? Okay, she said she sent a payment. To Mark. Got it. Got it. Thank you. For some reason, I okay. am. You did get the payment? It. Yes. See, this ain't that hard, is it? No. Yeah, it's fairly straightforward. I know we debated for a couple of weeks here on <laughs> getting started, but once we got to it, yeah, Steve, it's pretty easy. Yeah, any day in at 22. Yep, and then we got 23 to never too old. Yep, 23. Check that one out. That one's a pretty cool covered bridge. We got a lot of covered bridges around here. You ever get to Ashabilla County, Ohio? We got some bridges. You, there's a ton of them. We got some that don't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them got burnt down. Penny Days in at 25. Never too old at 26. Yeah, I, I just got into uh, collecting local postcards. I didn't even know that the town I grew up in would have a postcard. Gerard? Oh, my God. Yeah. There's a ton. I, I, I found I just. Lake City, but Gerard for sure. There's some North Gerard ones. No Miles Grove, obviously. That was a little too early, but. Um, Somebody knows remember it. Amy Mathers? She was the babysitter at church for a long time. Her and her sister, Chris. Okay. $30 oh, yes, to yes. Penny Day. Anyway, Amy collects that stuff. Yeah. So I've, I've known for years. She's She spent some good money. I've sold yearbooks, and she's bought them off of me on eBay. That's cool. Never Too Old is in at $31. Did you guys find any postcards in there? I, found the, I actually found a Waldemere one. Yeah, there wasn't too many. I've seen a few. Well, we found yeah. that 
We found him postcards marking behind that on that uh, that they had glued to that uh, piece of cardboard. Yeah, there was some there were some Abraham Lincoln ones. I don't know where they are right now. Actually, they're right here. I'll show you these. Oh, you can't show them yet because you're not on camera. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I got an Abraham Lincoln one. Mine's not the same though. <laughs> I think this one. I think these ones was like for the inside of his house. Yeah, all right. they're all from his house. Thirty-one going once to never too old. Let me uh, get back on the big screen here. So I can figure out how. To go. Oh, all right, you can show that one. Oh, okay. Yep. So they're all glossy. So they're not super old. Yeah, they're all from his house. Unfortunately, they're glued to this board, like a like a school report, and there's a little water damage at the bottom. But I thought they were cool. Yeah, they're not super valuable anyway. No. But they're cool. If, um, Mark's talked about uh, doing an antique booth. That'd be cool to hang in your antique booth. Yeah, just as a kind of eye catcher thing. Three one going twice. Why doesn't this type for me tonight? Uh, it's probably me. No, it's me. I keep. So there you go, 107. It's actually 174 postcards because I threw that one, uh, clipped that one in there. So Penny, I'm sure if you contact Never Too Old, they might work out a deal with you on the Santa Claus one. Uh, I'll try to put together a lot of some Christmas stuff for next week if you're interested in that sort of thing. I do have a small lot right now, and I'll have to see if I can get more of that together. I wish I had some Halloween stuff. We're going to sell this one. Yeah, 30, $31. Sold, never too old. Yeah, that rhymes. Soul? I can't even Soul. spell it. Soul's good. All right, we're going to put you back to the big screen, Mark, and go ahead. All right. I Again, I'm new to this, so I don't even know where to start. I have so much different stuff. I've got some vintage hats, and I've got some uh, other get-rich-quick scheme stuff. So I think I'm going to sell those, uh, get rich quick quick uh i don't even know how to describe these the the guy was really into printmaking um and we found a bunch of these uh i think the name of it is right here what was the name of this actually they're on here so engraver plates engraver plates oh, are those the cards yeah yeah these metal cards so engraver plates was something that you would purchase the the product out of the back of a, of a comic book as well. In fact, you know, I could pull up a comic book and probably find the original ad for these. Um, you would then get a mimeograph machine or some kind of engraver machine. Uh, you could probably do it with a like a Dremel type tool as well or the hand engravers. And so uh, while he really, really as a kid wanted, well, I'm assuming young adult wanted to get into making money for himself. He was kind of a go-getter. He was in the circus. He was uh, in the in the shop work. This he's, guy was fascinating. Yeah, I mean, he did. He's the guy where you're like, he lived everybody's life. You know, he did it all. So, he I just did. Like, yeah, he really did. And he was an interesting character too, because you look at a lot of older people and you're like, oh, they're wholesome and they're they're uh, they're this. Well, this guy. Uh, he was he was a showman for sure, and I think that you get what I imply there. He he was into making money any way he could, and this is one of those things. Um, these are engraver plates from, the best I can tell, these are 1970s, early 1970s. Like I said, out of the back of a comic book, um, and you would so this one here's a good example of this one. I don't know if you can see it. Yep. It's a social, looks like a social security card. He has a social security card. It's uh, it's steel, brass color, but it's steel, and they're all different. Um, you well, have these a lot don't of have them. any numbers stamped in them, right? No, I don't have any. I took out the ones with the numbers because it's you know people's personal yeah. information. Um, I'll check but, into you. Yeah, there's a ton of, you know, these different like zodiac signs. Um, got a Sagittarius, Scorpio, Libra, Virgo. Leo. I mean, they're all, it's all there. So basically what this was is he would, he would advertise. 
he would advertise it to his friends. It was one of those kind of like not a door to door, but like you talked amongst your friends. Hey, I, I or your your family or your extended family, and you would sell these things to them. You'd buy them for a dollar. You'd sell them for two dollars, kind of yeah. thing. And you could order the blanks out of the comic back of the comic book or wherever. Yeah, there was a whole catalog. In fact, I'm going to include the catalog for it. I, I don't know if I can show this stuff, Steve. It's got naked pictures on it. I'll show this side. That's no, okay. Um, so you would, it's the just original you, order. If you do show the, the nakeds, just kind of briefly, very, very brief. Here, I'll do this. There you go. Oh, I, I mean, saw that one. Yeah. Yeah, these are the most popular ones online. You can look them up now. Engrava plates. And How do you say, uh, is it engrave? And then A, and then plates. Correct. E These are pretty cool, guys. <laughs> yeah. So I'll show you the one. I'll have to black, black it out here. The one that's the most popular. Is there one in there? The, one there's the a news? Bird. Yeah. Oh, I've got a bunch of them. This one, actually, he's not nude at all. He's covering himself. So I think I can show this. Penny Day's in at five. She must have started looking it up. Yeah. So this is called the Burt Reynolds. He's, it's not really Burt Reynolds, <laughs> but on the internet, it's it looks like Burt Reynolds. He's so not basically. You could get anything inscribed on that that you wanted. I'm assuming. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, you know, I'll cover her up here. She's covered down there. Um, but there's a lot of these kind. Uh, I've thrown two each of of this into the you know each. So there's a. Let's see how we got here. Sorry. They are cool, Penny. Yeah, these are really cool, and they're they're blanks. There's no writing. Do you know on what these anymore. go uh, approximately? What these these ones go for? You said you um, looked them up. Well, the Burt the Burt ones, I saw them five bucks a piece. Okay. And I, and I'm giving you know, there's twenty of them here, I believe. I'll count them up. I have a lot more of these. The we'll call them the nudes. That's what they call them in the paperwork. I have a ton of these. Hide and seek Dan is in at ten dollars. Dan I, just wanted just, the nudes. Yeah. Well, he's gonna get them if you buy. Um, there were some other cool ones. The uh, these plates, you know, if you were no making way. Trucks, that's cool. The bigger size. You know, uh, grandpa had one of those social security card ones in his wallet. Yeah, it was a thing, I think, in the seventies. Like this is before people could steal your identity and, and destroy your life. You know, yeah, you would just go to this guy and be like, "Hey, I want, I want to make my card, not d disintegrate my wallet." Here you go, for two bucks. Um, there's some other ones in here. He, like I said, he was into CB radio. Um, this one says, "God grant me the serenity to accept things I cannot change, and the courage to change things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference." Amen. Uh, how so, many did you say was in here? I'm going to count them now. One, two, three, six, seven, nine, ten, sixteen. Hmm. Uh, there's 18 in this slot, plus the paperwork. There's doubles of all the nudes. Dan, you're uh, going to get yourself banned here pretty soon. I've been known to do it. <laughs> They're not. They're not actually nude. It's not bad stuff. Um, All right, we're at ten dollars to hide and seek picker. But they're really cool. I do have a lot more of them. Um, I say a lot. I probably have four of these what lots. The is worth of them, and they're in good shape. I only have one pamphlet that goes with it. It kind of tells the story a little more. Again, I think he he purchased this so he could. Uh, so he could sell them and he kept the paperwork. So I think it's pretty cool. That yep. you guys, ten dollars going once. Mark might ship this one in an envelope. <laughs> yeah. It's it's pretty light. They're pretty light. I I mean it'll be in an uh, envelope style. I know the main chat can't see this, Mark. And Joe, can you see my light flashing? Um, no, I don't see the light flash, and I, I heard a little bit of a lag, yet, you know, like, uh, I have lag. Chris yeah. Goose is in at 15. Like I said, if anybody wants more of these, let us know. We'll put up another lot. I, how many, how many do you think you have all together? Uh, lots this size. I probably have four of them. 
Okay. Most, and I'll say the most of it is there's a student ID one, and then there's a lot of the the, the partially new. People. William Ten William T T N. I'm gonna assume Tennessee shipping is included. Shipping no is registration. Included. Shipping shipping is always included. Generally, there will be no start bids, and you pay immediately after the auction is over to wh whoever is on screen auctioning that off. So for this particular auction, it would go to markdefiant at yahoo.com. So shipping is included. We're at 15 with Chris DeGoose. Thank you, Chris. Chris sings a mean version of Mean Black, or what, Long Black Train? I think that's the song, Long Black Train. Well, I'll get him on. Let's hear it. He won't do it. He won't <laughs> try. We're go 15 once. How about we just have Joe sing it? Joe likes singing. Go ahead, Joe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not not tonight. We we need bitters. <laughs> you don't want to scare everybody off right now, you know. <laughs> you know, we was talking about this guy being into everything, you know. We thought what we brought home was a circus tent. Here's one of the big uh big air gliders that you, you know a full size ride and not a hang glider. You know what's cool? sit on glider. Not to not to go on a tangent, but look at this. It's the blueprints for it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I have the blueprints for it right here. I mean, yeah, all of it. See how mine's flashing? I see yeah. that. Why is it doing that? But if I put my hand there, it stops. <laughs> well, it's just a little bit of extra showmanship. There you there. go. That stopped his okay. All right, we're going to go $15 twice to Chris the Goose. Look at this! Look at this one, Joe. Oh, that's awesome! Is that the other glider? There that's were the two glider blueprints. He would build the glider himself. There were actually two gliders in that garage, right? Yeah. This guy was into everything. I think what he I think what he was doing was he was buying blueprints and he was building them. He was making the product. Now, the ones that are, were in the garage, he actually purchased those, but then he would duplicate them. And I think he was, I think he was kind of uh, into shyster. <laughs> shyster. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but you know. Well, we don't he, know. <laughs> he was into making money. All right. You, you ready, Mark? We're going to sell this one. Let's sell it. $15 sold to Chris the Goose. Chris, Thank you, Chris, go ahead and send your payment to Mark Defiant. Uh, Yahoo.com. That's my oldest email address, by the way. I've had that since 1998. Uh, this is not my oldest. It's the one I've had the longest, though. Yeah. So right. the oldest that I have. All right. I promised video games. So we're going to do some video games first. Let me get myself big up here. I still don't know how to do this properly. So, All right. This is um, all Nintendo DS and 3DS games in this lot. Uh, there are some loose ones. And we'll get to those last. These are all in the cases. And I think most of them have manuals. Here, really, Scott? One dollar? Jesus. All right. This one is three dollars and seventeen cents. I like that one. <laughs> These are people who think they're being funny. This is uh, Lego Star Wars. And I have to kick you both. Uh, the complete saga. Complete with manual. You're too late. Scott, uh, Dan has it at three dollars and seventeen cents. Higher to the Caribbean uh, game and manual. Batman Arkham something Blackgate. My eyes suck. Four dollars. Four dollars. No, I'm not going to give you a wrench. <laughs> the wrench means uh, you can ban people and stuff. <laughs> 420. See what you did there. Yeah. Wait, that wasn't the right game. Yes, it was. All right. You guys are got me all off. There. Uh, centipede infestation. Ten dollars to Steve Bash. And it does have the game and the manual. The goose is in at 15. Uh, Lego Jurassic World. With manual and game. Robert Bowman in at 20. Monster High, New Ghoul in School. I see what they did there. 
You get the bearded picker at 22. Nice. Bargain resale and Brenda are at 25. So bar bargain resale would get it because she was first. Or he. Okay. Robert Bowman is 26. So when that happens, Mark, just call who got it first. Okay. Transformers 3DS game. Uh, both in the end game. Digging for dinosaurs. You get the bearded I've never heard of that. You guys are getting the hang of this shit. I like yeah. It. All right, that's all the the cave games. That last one did not have a uh, a manual with it. We'll put it there so you can still see it. Brenda, thirty-five. Scooby Joe Dudes. loves auctioneering. By the way, we'll get oh, him yeah. up. Let's get Joe. Joe, the right way, Joe. Joe, give him a real auctioneer scoop. Thirty-five, thirty-seven and a half, thirty-seven and a half, forty dollar wear. <laughs> All right, this is Scooby Doo First Frights. Oh wow! This is Splinter Cell 3D for the 3DS. This is Plants vs Zombies for the regular DS. This is Mario Kart DS. Look at that! I put a good one in there. Chad, Chad, Chad thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Monkey, I'll let you go ahead and do it, Mark or Joe. Yeah. Monkey Ball, at 3DS. At yeah, AB uh, Dragons at 40. Lego Battles. This is Sims 2. Steve, did you get these on the, the Route 7? No, these were the day before the Route 7. God. I happened to, it, it's funny. I, oh, I was leaving where, you know, I came from cleaning that house out with you guys. Yeah. I'm on oh, my way home, and there were two yard sales in Springfield. <laughs> yes, Steve Nash at 44. My Sims Kingdom. Yeah, this is a good box. And finally, sure. Battles Ninjago. So I'll count How these up. What's that? How many games total? That's what I'm going to find out right now. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loose games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight not loose games. So. 17. Thank you for the math. <laughs> 17 games. It is a good lot. It's a real good lot. I figured I'd throw Mario Kart in there. Now, these are not tested. You guys know. Uh, I don't have actually sold the uh, two DSs I had to the people in this auction, so I don't have one right now. Yeah. That's these my problem. From, 40, we're going to go 44 going once. Ah, see, I didn't type again. There, that time I did. Good little lot. Seven, what did we say? 17 Nintendo DS and 3DS games. So this is also giving Mark and Joe an idea of what sort of things to pick up at yard sales. Uh, and, you know, as they're going out and finding these... Uh, homes to clean out. What kind of things will sell too? But we got quite a delay from our chat to the Streamyard chat for the regular chat. That's why I pull up the actual YouTube chat. We're gonna go twice on this one. We got it. Steve Bash, I think. Yeah, Steve Bash, forty-four dollars. Going twice. I should warn you before I put the screen on. Oh, you're... oh by the way, so normally, like... I have, yeah, normally I have little slips of paper that I, you know, like bad uh, mailing labels and stuff like that that I write on. And tonight, this came out of the house, by the way. It was in with those uh, um, heat transfers. It's a Garfield yeah. notepad. <laughs> That's where I, I'm keeping all my information tonight. All right, yeah. Bearded Picker. Wow, just before I can say sold, Bearded Picker comes in at $45. Yeah, I got Lyle Stationary to write on. <laughs> Lyle is the guy's name. But, uh, he passed 10 years ago, and nobody had been in there to get this stuff. It sat 10 years. It's amazing. And it wasn't It wasn't like it was a hoarder house for sure, but it wasn't so bad it's, that it was unbearable. Scott, did you ever get that jersey I sent? 
45 going once. Is it once? once? I didn't even put it. Swamp Picker, what's up, Glenn? Glenn is from Louisiana. All right, good. Was it all that you expected and even more? How late can you guys stay up tonight? Are you working tomorrow? Are you guys working tomorrow? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah, we're working tomorrow. All right. Always I won't works. keep you up too late. He touched himself with it. All right. It was a good jersey then. <laughs> Remember that Willie Parker jersey I was telling you I found at the that one weird yard sale mark? I call I think I asked you about it. Yeah. That's he uh, Scott bought it. Bearded picker. Oh nice. Hey, I figured, it's well, I think Parker. I, I actually have uh, I might still have that jersey too. Forty five. Twice. And we're gonna sell this thing here in a minute. Yes, I didn't. <laughs> Poor Scott. And we're gonna sell it to Scott Zilke. The bearded pickup. I haven't received I haven't received Chris's payment yet. Let me know if there's a problem on my end. What was that? Forty-five dollars. Forty-five dollars. Forty-five. Yep. Yes. I do have one more uh, game lot tonight. It's uh, Xbox 360. It's a smaller, smaller lot. We'll work on getting some more cleaned up for next week too. Uh, do you have any games tonight, Mark? I know you said something. I I have tonight. some uh, some computer stuff. All right. So I'm we'll give it a shot. Now. All right, yeah. I'm gonna make you big. Make me big. So this is the computer lot that we pulled out of there. And again, this is in pretty decent shape. Some of it's older than others. Um, here, I'll start with the gateway stuff. So everybody remembers the gateway computer. Um, Lyle had a few of them. These, this was the stuff that we could pull out and was still I good. The, uh, oh, I can't get it to work yet, but I will. That uh, Radio Shack TRS-80. Out of there. Remember that? Oh, that yeah. From, yeah. Yeah, that there. was really cool. I think you had to program that one to make it work. Was that how it you was? You had to have a disc with some sort of DOS version on it. Yeah. And it had like. I don't know if the bearded picker is actually in it, 420, but uh, nice. it sounds like an awesome bid to me. <laughs> if he is, that's appreciated. <laughs> um, so the gateway, the gateway uh, software storage in great shape, obviously. Um, but it's got the gateway operating uh, Windows XP. Everybody remembers Windows XP, how great it was. Um, so that stuff's in here. I know there's some people who, who like to refurbish computers, so that's why I, I kept this, passed it on. I know how hard it is sometimes to find these. Uh, go back. I've sold the discs. The installation yeah. for $10, $15, $25 dollars sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's what these, that's the installation operation uh, system discs. Um, there's some weird ones in here. I'm not going to lie. Like Master Cook. I don't know exactly if it's a recipe uh, book or not. Chad uh, Chad is in it. $5. We've got um, board games. Again, all of these I've looked at. The, they look good. I don't have a gateway, so I don't know. These how to all, test. Are these all for Windows XP? These are, let me check, make sure. How many guess? Yeah, it's the XP. This was on the XP stuff. Now that doesn't have to be a gateway. It can be any Windows XP. Yeah. Some of that old software is good. Yeah, it's casino, card I games. So I, think through, I should have looked through this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this is stuff that I, I, you know, I picked out, or we picked out, um, made sure that it was cleaned and, you know, not destroyed. Um, this one's called Custom Land Designer 3D Design. That's probably one I'd like. Um, there's another one in there. Oh, there's multiple ones in there of that. Print a print list. Artist. So, like a print. This has got a few. Print discs. artist, isn't it? Say again. Print artist. Oh, yeah. Print artist. Yep. Print artist five. Print artist six. And card studio two. That's CD number three. I don't know if the rest are in there. Um, and Mark, stuff you can sure. send this media mail because okay. as long as there's no advertisement. I believe There's computer cards. software can go media mail. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, card Studio Deluxe CD number one. 
CD number two, CD four. So it looks like the set is in there. Scrapbook studio, uh, print artist one. So I, I think they're just out of order. Um, yeah, it looks like that's the whole lot of that. Um, so that's that one. I have this. This is pull this one out. There's a. But wait. But wait, there's more. Um, triple play, two thousand one. That's a baseball game. It looks like. Throw that in there. Again, I have not been able to check these because oh, these I, are PC discs, correct? They are all PC discs. Mm. Um, this one's called Net Nanny. I'm assuming that's a virus. Net, yeah, but it's all no. It oh. was Net Nanny was to protect your children from the internet. Oh, there you go. Some yeah. PMRC stuff. I know, I know a little bit about that. <laughs> um, these I think came out of like cereal boxes. I don't know. Clue. These are PC games. Oh yeah, I used to have these things. I know what you're talking yeah. about. They're stamped 06-1504 on there. Um, that America was... Online on that disc? No, General Mills. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, this one is General Mills, Light Dog, Merriam Webster, Amazon Trail, third edition. There's that one. Um, again, oh. I don't know why this guy would have this stuff. But this one's Mickey and Friends Print Studio. He but had was, some was, weird stuff. <laughs> he, he had some weird stuff for sure. All right, so, Chad Chad's still high better at five dollars. Show us the gold, Mark. There's got to be some gold in there. Well, there's a good, there's a good one here because I mean everybody loves this game, Sim City Three Thousand. <laughs> I mean, come on, who didn't love playing that game? Ridiculous. Um, this one's a training video. I, I like Two Thousand. Um, Hot weird. Wheels Jets. It's all there. The paperwork is in there. The disc is in there. It doesn't look like it was ever played. Hot Wheels Jets. We've got Monster Jam. Maximum Destruction. There you go. This one's... No, it's rated teen for violence. Marvel, yeah, it's a PC... Still at five dollars with Chad Chad. Another Hot Wheels uh, mechanics. This board is there. And what's this one? This one's a two CD. It is Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun. That's what that says. It's a two disc game. Some of those are decent. I'd, I'd, I should look that up, but I'm not allowed to bid on your stuff. So I yeah. am, but I ain't gonna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the the net nanny. There was a book with it. The net nanny is probably not much, but we're yeah. with Steve Vash at seven. But it is cool history of yeah. I like I know the history of this stuff. Like looking through it to just kind of see and, if. It's a lot of people actually pit, play those games. There are a few older PC games that are worth a boatload of cash. Oh, if you can find an original Doom. Yeah, that stuff awesome. like that. I'm looking for them. Uh, what was it? There's one that I, I find every once in a while that I sell. And it's a stupid little game. Elf Bowling. That's what it is. Elf Bowling. Have you ever come across Elf Bowling? It's like worth 25 30 bucks or something like that. And it's, and it's just a like stupid game. But because what was of that one Atari game that I, I showed you the other day? It came on a disc or a floppy I disc. Recall. I don't recall. But yeah, it, still at seven with Steve Vash. Yes, please send this one media mail, Mark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it, so you're getting all of this. There's what, 20 probably or so discs altogether? Yeah. About 20. All right, I'm going to start it. counting this down. $7 going once. It's worth $7. It's just fun. Have fun. It's, I, I would play with every <laughs> single one of those. I know. I keep, I keep an older computer around. I have a laptop that has Windows XP on it. 
I have one with Vista. I have one with I don't have one with ME yet. But I keep them around because it's fun to go back and look at that stuff and play those games. William TN is in at eight dollars. There you go. You got an extra buck for your shipping charge there, Mark. Yeah, thanks for the shipping. <laughs> <laughs> uh it won't be that much actually. Zach is in no, here. I don't know. I'll be honest. This is Zach, this do you is... have the money? <laughs> hey Zach. Zach, I'm just letting you know right now. Bids are binding. Ten dollars to Zach Edwards. <laughs> By the way, Zach is my son. <clears throat> He's rich, apparently. <laughs> Zach, I'm telling you, though, if you're bidding, you better be serious, all right? I don't mind you being in here and bidding, but be serious about it. You really want it. Some of the, You probably played a lot of those games when you were a kid, Zach. Yeah. Some of these, well, Sim, Sim City is the only one I played. So. Mark, Mark, you won't have to ship that one. We can just drop that one off in Lake City. Yeah. yeah that's true. Yeah. $10. $10 going once to Zach. Zach, don't send a payment. We'll, we'll, we'll get it dropped off to you. Maybe I should stop posting these on my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> get the riffraff in here. Zach's a good kid. Sometimes. Zach is a good kid. Yep. Man and Conquer is fun. Oh, there you yeah, go. He says he's still got the one on his. Okay. The Tiberian Sun game on whatever. What's Yuri's? I have no idea. Twice. I'm going to sell it to you, Zach. You better be prepared to come up with that cash. <laughs> if not, he'll have to tell us what grinds his gears. <laughs> no, please, no. I'm sick of those things. <laughs> It grinds his gears every day, doesn't it? <laughs> He's going back and reformat. Why do you need to go back and reformat those, Zach? That's what I want to know. All right, I'm going to sell this. Zach, you bought it. Sell it. All right, $10. Uncle Zach. Mark will get in contact with you, with, with you or Joe, or I will. And, and we'll, uh, who's Richard Meter? I must know you. Richard Meter? If Richard doesn't know you, Joe, then that means... Uh, Somebody likes your Amish hat. Absolutely. This hat this hat's 25 years old. That's the first hat my mom and dad bought me. So I don't know. Some of you came in later who don't know. Joe used to be Amish. Well, I guess you're always Amish, technically. Yeah. This little little right now. <laughs> Ex Amish, yeah. Uh, do you guys know where Zach's at now? He's he's in that trailer park by VP there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what trailer it is, but I know he's over there. All right. He'll get a hold of one of you. He'll get a hold of you, Mark. I'm sure he'll get a hold of you. All right, Chris, thanks for turn. your payment. You got it? Oh, good. All right, this is a different kind of lot that I haven't done before. Um, these are all brand new. 226. Okay, got you. Should not put your address out on the internet, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me make myself big. These hey, Steve. Are, yeah. Real quick, I'm going to step away and go get those Nintendo powers. That's fine. All right, right uh, this is a, a lot of, these were a retail arbitrage item. These are all Star Wars figures. They're the gold um, what does it say? commemorative edition Skywalker saga. But this is what they are. I have three of this guy, these two guys. This is Finn and Poe Damon. So I have three of those. Two, three. Uh, Chad Chad's in it, or eight. Uh, Robert Bowman's in it. Eight. Um, I have two of the Obi Wan Kenobi and the Anakin Skywalkers, and then I have four of the Kylo Ren and Rey. So that's what you're getting there. I think four of those are Kylo Ren and Rey. So you're getting in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these figures. Chad Chad's in at fourteen dollars. So again, four of the Kylo Ren and Rays. Two of the oops, Obi Obi Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalkers. And two 
Looks like two of the Finn and Poe Damons. Steve Vash is at 16. Again, folks, this is an absolute auction. So if you bid it, you win it, you absolutely bought it. Everybody left me. Oh, there they are. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> My there son, loved, uh, my son wants to hang his TV, and he had to be find his find a stud in the wall for him. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these. Uh, again, the com commemorative edition Skywalker Saga series. That's what the backside looks like. Let me move these out of there. All shiny and nice. Eighteen dollars to Robert Bowman, and then William comes in at twenty. Put them over here so you guys can actually see them. Are they all the same, Steve? No, there's four of one character. There are two characters in each box, but there's four of the Kylo Ren and Rey's. I think. Oh, let me go through these again. Get them all messed up. There's two of this one. I don't know. I said it before, so we'll get there. That's Ben and Poe Damon. This will be one, I think. Okay, four of the Kylo Ren and Rays. One, two, three of the Finn and Poe Damons, and two of the Obi Wan and Anakin's. So twenty dollars to William T. N. We'll start counting that down. Yeah, nice quick sale. Twenty dollars once. Vivid comes in at twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars to Vivid Wave. Nine, uh, nine packages all together. All Star Wars, all the uh, commemorative edition Skywalkers. Twenty-five dollars going once. Or, yeah, once. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys heard uh, Mark. He's coming back with some uh, Nintendo Power magazines and some other, I think, some other stuff to go with it. So you got Chad Chad in that twenty six, Steve. Twenty six dollars to Chad Chad. Yeah, I have some Nintendo Power. I also have some game booklets too. I think right. I'm gonna have to break them up because it's a lot of stuff. Well, make it make it what you think is good. That's all. That looks good. We're gonna go twenty six dollars going once. Nine of these. Nine, yep, nine. I'm over here pulling them out off of eBay because <laughs> I don't want to sell them. And I forgot to take them off of eBay. <laughs> so that's why, there's a little bit, that's why there's a little bit of silence. I'm selling to you guys and then I won't have any. Then, I, then I'll sell them on eBay and then I'll have to. $26 going twice. Chad, Chad. What are you guys thinking so far? Are you liking this auction stuff? Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's fun. Learning. Learning, and it's it's not hard. But coming no. up with the, the right kind of lots, and yeah, I mean, I have no doubt you guys can pick. Uh, you'll outdo me eventually. But. All right, we're gonna sell this one. Twenty six dollars sold. And to the fans, to the people who are listening, the bidders, uh, what do you guys think? Is this something you like? You like more more than just one person? The variety, I like it. Yeah, I think it's yeah. cool because it brings a different perspective different each one. Yeah. All right, we're going to sell this. $26 sold. 
I don't know if I already said that or not. You did say it already. Uh -huh. But I don't know if you typed it in yet. I did. Uh, because I keep forgetting to type things. All right, we're going to switch back. Uh, Scott says auctions with multiple sellers are bad. Scott, who does an auction with multiple sellers. Uh, for those of you who are listening, if you don't already know, which you probably all do, uh, Scott and Dan and uh, Harlan, that's all. We'll be doing an auction tomorrow night. Uh, Tuesday night, they do theirs every Tuesday at 8 uh, Eastern. 8 Eastern. So make sure you go check that one out as well. Go to uh, Bearded, beardedpicker.com. No, Bearded Picker on YouTube. All right, Mark, I'm going to make you big. Cool. Those cannot, I'm trying to make you big. It's not like those cannot go me. Yeah, this is a little bit heavy. Um, because it's new, it's it's obviously magazines. There's eleven up now. Um, Nintendo Power is obviously a magazine that they put out because they put out. It, there's a new documentary. I don't know if it's new. It's new to me. New documentary on Netflix about the video game industry and how it started and and what uh, basically why why it kind of blew up into what it is now and it, it's really cool because it goes through each era and obviously one of the main focuses is N N nintendo and in, in its early stage and they had the nintendo i forget what they were called nintendo experts that you would actually call on the phone and uh get the advice on the games because they were making the game so fast that nobody knew how to play them the only, only people who knew how to play them were the designers and so nintendo power was the after they had so many games, it was the answer to that because even the game, the gamers who were the experts, so on, so to speak, they couldn't keep up with the amount of games. So Nintendo you, Power you already got an eleven dollar bid, Mark, without even showing. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo Power. Uh, we got these out of another pick house. Um, they're in great shape. We have eleven of them here. Um, these came out when the games came out, um, or around the same time. Um, the cool part about a lot of Nintendo Power games, they had in them fold out. You know, I don't know if they actually fold out. So fold out. I got your, I got your cash. Posters. So it basically told you how to play the game. And as far as I can tell, um, as I go through these, they're all in there. What um, uh, every... do you know the the years on these? Approximate. Uh, like nineties, two thousands. I think these are all early nineties. I know they're right. 90s because... should say on the cover, not. Thanks, uh, uh, 19, Glenn, for your help. November 1991 on this William, one. William, Steve Ash is in a 22. Uh, we got... So we got Final Fantasy 2. We got Mega Man 3. These are all, like I said, early 90s. Don't think I have any anything later than early 90s. It's, it's probably actually good for you in this lot. It's a great, great lot. $25 to Never Too Old. Um, yeah, you're in a little bit late on that one. Power Blade. We've got Mega Man, Dr. Willie's Revenge. This one's cool. Super Mario World. Yoshi and Mario fly super high. Star Wars, Final Fantasy Adventure. It's pretty cool. The uh, what's the, uh, let's see what the, I think this game is called Dyna. Dyna Crystal is the foldout on this one. All of the uh, posters in here are intact and still in the magazines. He's looking fantastic shape, actually. Yeah, these it was amazing. This was under a pile of just bags of stuff, and we just picked them up in the, this condition right here. They've been stored since then. Um, Vice Project, Doom. Um, a lot of them, I don't know if this goes into the era where the first person shooter or not. I think it is. Um, that was a big, from what I understand, I'm not a super big video game guy, but from what I understand, that that changed the game when it became like first-person multi-platform. Um, and it's cool to see the original, the original, you know, directions of those. Um, $27 to Steven Street. We've got Battletoads. We've got Star Trek. Beam up to adventure. Okay. 
Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I'm just giving you the, the title of them off the top. Uh, we've got Metal Storm. That one. So that's the 10th. And then the one, uh, the, the last one is actually a strategy guide. Um, Nintendo came out with strategy guides for, I don't know if it was every game, but certain games, I think, for the more popular games. As far as I can tell, this is pre, uh, yeah, this is 1990. So this is pre, I know Madden was out before this, but pre Madden being what it is now, of course. Um, this is the four player football game, strategy mm -hmm. game. Um, so it just goes through, yeah, the whole thing is about that game um, and games like it in here. So it's pretty cool. That, I mean, this one's seven, Stephen Strait so far. There is not even, not even really. Nicer condition than most of the paperwork I saw. Yeah. I mean, there's a little scuff on that top corner and a little dog ear down here. I see. That's it. Nothing, uh, nothing missing out of any of these. I thought they were pretty cool. Joe actually picked them up. I was surprised. Uh, when he had waves in a 30. Off the ground, I was like, oh. Mark, can you reshow the reshow the fronts of them all again there? Because some of them was like blinded out by the light. Oh, okay, so we got. I'll just go through them quick. That's Thirty-two to Stephen Strait. Thirty-three to Vivid Waves. Some of these look like they came off the shelf at the store just you know ten minutes ago. That's how nice they are. Never too old. In at thirty-five. Uh, we've got battle toads on this one. Yeah. Stephen Strait says, "Nope, forty bucks." Try to set up my lighting here at the shop, so it. Uh, <laughs> it was just there was just a big glare at it on the start there, you know. Yeah. Never too old came in at forty five. That's good waves tied him, so I was gonna have to do a little bit better. I like that one. Yeah, that's uh, Super cool. Mario World. Yeah. I mean, he's the king, right? It's the king. Changed video games forever. Dr. Wiley's Revenge. This did not come out of the more recent pick. This is all from uh, a different time. We, we, picked them, we picked them about a month and a half ago, I think. Yeah. $50 yeah. to Vivid Ways. But that was another house uh, pick house, right? Yeah, that was another completely different pick house. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I wish we could have got more out of that house. It was not possible. Oh, that was the that was the one with all the other stuff I was selling for you guys, right? No. Sets no. On, you know? Total different one. <laughs> Fifty dollars to Vivid Waves. Never too Final old Fantasy. is out. So Final Fantasy one I just noticed this bind on this is a little bit rough, but that's the only one out of all of them that's got a rough uh Binding on How many it. was in the lot 11, you said, right? Yeah, and 10 are in, in excellent shape. This 11th is a little little scuffed on the side. So 11 total pieces on this lot. All Nintendo $50. Power. All like 1991 era. Although that strategy guide might be... No, that's 90. Golden era, anyway, of yeah. you know, Nintendo. Volume 19... Of the Nintendo strategy guides. Fifty dollars going once to Vivid Waves. Again, cool. folks, when you uh, send your payment, make sure that you put your name, your address, and what you bought, so that we know who what goes to. Generally, everything has a different bid, and I can figure it out fairly easy. But it just makes it easier on us to make sure you get the right stuff. But we do keep records too. We write it down. I write it down on scraps of paper. Mark's got a really nice uh, paper there, but it's the same thing. Scott, and that comes from managing bands. When you manage rock and roll <laughs> bands, you have to write everything down. Or you forget. Yeah, I did. Scott Scott is one that doesn't type his address. If you need it, Mark, I'll get it to you. If, you, right. if he wins. So, Steven Strait comes in. I was just about to say twice. Steven Strait comes in at $52. Again, if you are on the uh, YouTube chat, make sure you're on live chat, not top chat. So just in case. Although I've never noticed a difference. People say there is. 
I'm glad you found a nice quiet place in the house, Joe. <laughs> uh, and you, 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 you couldn't tell I had nine kids in your house. Jeez. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> nine, right? Literally nine. And two dogs. Yep. And Good no, they're not all mine. They're not all mine. <laughs> 50, 50, $55 of vivid waves. That's another story for another time. That's another story for another time. Yep. Vivid waves, fifty-five dollars. We're gonna go tw once. Kind of exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I, I enjoy this. And somebody asked me, "Well, why don't you just sell this stuff on eBay?" I'm like, "This is more exciting." And yeah, it's I, a lot I, of the I times it's stuff, but I don't want to deal with like postcards. I hate postcards. I'm you know? I'm so like indecisive on eBay and stuff like that. Yeah. But you put me in an auction, or you put Joe in an auction, and it's like. I'll spend my entire paycheck. You know what I mean? It's I'm more of the in-person kind of. I like, I like the auction format. Um, even if I don't make as much as I would on eBay, it's, I know it's going to other resellers. We're going to go 55 yeah. toys. We'll make money and I've made money on it too. Generally. Yeah. Now, not always. There was a couple lots I've lost on, but it's okay. Yeah. I, I, perfectly understand it's this is the middle middle ground for a lot of this stuff and that's yeah. that's cool yep. i'm just and happy you, to be on the landfill yeah because <laughs> it's well, cool that's, I that's mean, the thing we're saving this stuff from garbage basically well, what would have happened to that hoarder house so oh, that would have scrap metal out of it and that would have been it they would have thrown everything else out exactly. well, we, were driving, we, we, we was driving by and i turned around don't work we're going back <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right. We're going to sell it, Mark. Sell it. $55 sold to Vivid Waves. Again, Vivid, you can uh, look at Mark's uh, Yahoo address there. That's where the PayPal address goes. And again, thanks, Glenn, for uh, making everything clearer in the chat for us. Swamp Picker is Glenn, by the way, if you didn't know. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> I'm get comfortable over there. All right. You gotta make yourself bigger, Steve. What's that? Make yourself bigger. I will. All right. So you are what? You you the fucking expert now? <laughs> well, I'm trying to be. Earlier today, you didn't even know how to hook up a webcam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Not you guys. All right, this is a lot of. Tw I think there's 24 in here. Whoa, my. Microphone's falling down again. 24 well, photographs, and they're all of the same era, they look like. There's a couple newer ones like this one, but most of them are, I don't know, a little newer or older. But this one says, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I just thought it was cute, so I put it in there. A gentleman with a tie. Some of these are missing their covers. That's all right, Glenn. Thanks for your help, though. Uh, Vivid Web Waves uh, sent to payment, Mark. Thank you. I just got it. Uh, lady with her baby. That's an actual photo, real photo postcard. There's a few of those in here. This is a real photo postcard as well. So. Yeah, that was one thing we found in this house that we just did the other day was tin types. I was I was surprised that there was gonna be photos that old there. Yeah, and it, it's There's, pretty cool. I found some of these. Uh, what are these called again, Steve? The card. Uh, cabinet cards. Cabinet, yeah, cabinet cards. So some I found of these, some. I think are. These I don't know the terminology that well, but these ones are in really great shape. A lot of them, a lot of times, are faded. This one time. says Pop Reichart on the back, so I'm gonna guess that's the kid's name. <laughs> I don't know, Pop Reichart. Sure, but have a cigarette. Mm. Well, let's step up. Right, I'll be right back. All right. I'm going to teach him how to mute. <laughs> All right, here's another kid. Uh, this one's, a lot of these are from uh, La Tro, or, uh, Lebanon, PA, Philadelphia, PA, uh, that area. Another kid. A lot of children in these. No writing on this one. 
I'm going to guess uh, one of these is dated 1903. So I'm going to guess early 1900s on these, maybe late 1800s. Again, yeah, no I, I, yeah. I'm I was trying to see when the tin type to the cardstock. It's it's in that same era. Yep. Another baby. I do not have any of the deceased people photos. That would be wonderful if I did, but because those things go for big money. Steve Bash yeah. is in at five bucks. Another baby there. I mean, I was um, just looking at some of these the other day. This one I think is tin. So it's a it's got a different look to it. You can see how it when it reflects. Oh, and okay. it's yeah, it feels tin to me. So yeah, it's I guess a later that a tin type. That's a later tin type, probably. It's yeah. hard to tell on here. A lot of the tin types that were back then, they they it's very hard uh, to how fine it one isn't those. disintegrating. It might not be tin. Don't take my word for that. These might be paper because this one looks like paper. It might Same be a girl. glossy glossy stock or something. Same girl, but a different look to the photo. Never too Never old is six. Six. Here is a husband and a wife. Kind of a nice little wedding photo there. It's the only actual wedding photo I have. Um, another husband and wife. If you notice, this is the period time period where before this, and there's some photos like that, the husband was always seated and the wife was behind him. Never too old and you can, see the, you can see the transition on some of these pictures where they were treating uh, women more as equal. So oh, yeah, they're where, they're standing, where they're allowed to both stand. Yeah. Or not allowed to, but they, they weren't, you know, the husband wasn't sitting, but there are still some in here. Now, this one, they're both sitting. So, like, but he's higher, this is he's probably higher up than her. Yeah, he's yeah. higher. This is probably my favorite. Again, I think there's 24 of these. Here's the older one. Well, you can tell just by her, her uh, get up there. That's 1920s, I bet you. She looks like a flapper. These are in really good shape. Normally, yeah. I find these and they're, you know, they're really rough. The flap, you know, fold out parts are not there. And you're, and you're getting, you know, two to some five dollars. Some for of these them. are that way where they're messed up. This is another uh, photo postcard, real photo postcard of a baby. Steve Vash is in at 14. I love it because it that was somebody's life. You know what I mean? That's what I think is cool about all this. There's a, a guy. It's, that's that's Every Billy time I see him, I'm like, and there's a the guy. Yep, yeah. he was alive. I think that's Billy the Kid, I think. <laughs> man, oh man. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, no, that's not Billy the Kid. That is uh, Butch Cassidy, I think. Yeah. Maybe. I could be wrong. You might want to bit high, though. Just in case. <laughs> I just One got uh, Buffalo could Bills. Be famous. I just got Buffalo Bills, uh, Bill Cody's autobiography, and it like printed after he died, like really recent after he died. And man, right. did that guy! He loved himself. He really oh, did. Sure. The title for the book is the entire front page. There is another uh, real photo postcard. Fifteen to never too old. This is. Uh, probably the best picture in the lot as far as resale value, probably. I would say because of just the, the way those boys look. They're in little sailor outfits. And so cool. I like that one. I would guess. I, I don't know. I don't sell photos. I got these at a yard sale this weekend. So. This is quite the attractive family. They, whoever had them, I wonder if they had them, if they were... Uh photographer family that was you know because these are really good shape i never see them this good a shape to the be lady who sold these to me said she had picked them up at yard sales over the years okay so they're they didn't come from the same but a lot of these do say pennsylvania uh, so she's a collector so she yeah. picked out the good ones basically <laughs> i guess i don't know she just she said she liked to make up a history about each one of them and stuff like that so, that's kind of how anyways, i that, that's it I believe there's 24 of them. We are at $15, never too old. I'm going to count them, and after I count them, we'll, we'll count it out. Uh, 
I don't know what an average one of these goes for. I, when I, like I said, when I see them, they're anywhere in that good of shape. They're between uh, two to five dollars pens, but mostly you see them around the two dollar, three dollar range. But these ones are really good shape. A piece. 20. For sure. 22. Yep, 24. 24 photographs for $15. And we're going to say go on once. I do have another lot. We'll probably run next week. 15 once. Steve's out. I still don't know how to do it. Right? <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, Garfield notepad. What did I do with it? Oh no! Did I lose the Garfield notepad? <laughs> Hats. We'll do some. Alan, I will get you a hat eventually when I decide to make one. Alan wants a Bigfoot hat. I have. Yeah. A Night. You going to bed? Hey. All right, we're going to go 15 twice. Who's got this one? NTO. And we're going to sell it. We're going to sell it to Never Too Old for $15. Goodbye there, I think. This is great. That sort of thing would be great for your antique booth. Oh, yeah. That's why I always keep my eye out for them. For sure. Well, I have Marmark if you want to buy them off me. <laughs> All right. I'm going to make you big. We'll talk about that. <laughs> no, I look for them all the time. I mean, that's... that's uh, I, I'm into the history part of it, so. Yep. Um, so we're gonna sell some hats. I got some hats. I'm gonna do hats here. next too, but yours are vintage. Mine are mine will be brand new. Yeah, these are all from a pick. Actually, Steve picked before. This guy had so many hats. Um, just I got there before you did. I yeah, buy a year. I actually, <laughs> I actually texted him. I was like, "Hey, these hats. Did you see these?" And he's like, "Yeah, that guy sold me some last year." So I've got. Oh, I think I've got 24 in each lot. I'm just going to hold them down here and go through them. Now, they're all local as far as I can tell. Well, this one's not. This one's Bush Gardens. The tags on them, this one just says Bush Gardens, the old country, so it doesn't have a stamp on the tag or on the, the uh, thing, but Bush Gardens. And that's a uh, feels very soft material almost like a parachute type <laughs> on that one but these are all this guy must have collected hats i think we bought every single one of them um, i've got hats out the ass for the next few weeks i bought 110 of them this weekend this one's the christian sportsman fellowship a lot of this stuff i think was local um again no, some 90s or late 80s yeah no uh stamp on christian these are all uh, snapbacks. Snapbacks, all snapback. Uh, actually, sorry, first one. Nope. So far, they're all snapbacks. Oh, well, that's probably the Christian Alliance Church there in Gerard. Yeah, this one's Speedway. That's what I was thinking. It's a snapback trucker, Alliance man. So I'm assuming that's the church one, probably for like a softball team or something. It was like I remember in the '80s, everybody had a softball. Uh, team for their church. This one's Corduroy. Calgon. Take also me away. A, also a snapback. Made in USA. It's got a very, it's got like a, almost one of those like sweat bands sewn into it. <laughs> I imagine this thing is hot as hell. Steve Strait is in at $10. That's a we good hat right there. A Presta Supply. Presta Supply is not snapback. It is one of those leather slider ones. Yeah. 
Yeah. Big Boss awesome. Man said he bought 250 to 300 vintage ads this weekend. Wow. I did 110 this weekend. Spent 40 bucks. <laughs> what I get like 20? No, I got 40. Yeah. Strong manufacturing on this, and that's press to supply. I'll go through these a little quicker. That's uh, cool. One. Builders Hardware. This one's a cool one. It's a showcase by Yapong. I've heard that name before, but yeah, that's a cool one. All of them in a really good shape. There's no staining on the bills. They are, I don't know if they were ever worn, to be honest. I don't think he ever wore any because the ones I got from him were pretty good. Yeah. I mean, even these trucker hats like this, Hermans, like this is definitely not worn. <laughs> got a gold medal headwear on this one. I don't think it was ever unsnapped. So it's a brand new old stock. You're looking for K brand. If you ever find K brand, they're pretty decent. Yeah, I've run across a few of those. I don't have any of those, I don't think. Electrical Apparatus, again, a local company. Um, this one looks like it might be 80s. Definite 80s. $15 a Krista Goose. So that's a cool one. Another, a lot of these, again, local industry. He collected. This one's Capital Brand, one size fits all. Not worn. Uh, plus wood. You must have been into carpentry. A lot of those kind. No fading on any of these either. It's a little bit of a lint on this one, but you know, it's it's obvious that none of these were worn. Another quarter eye front. What's this one? Air vent. That's a cool one. Yeah. That one is an IMA. Uh, this one just says ingredients matter and it's a velcro great what is the, what is the picture hat. on it it's a painter's hat like uh like we're doing mm. lines on uh um, on road? parking lots yeah <coughs> pioneer it's got the little you know still at 15 with chris the goose i'm gonna go through them quicker um uh, i don't know i'm here says. all night mark yeah <laughs> I don't care. I don't got to work in the morning. Cypress head. Cypress head. Uh, this one's a leather golf oh, yeah. hat. Never say Velcro. Well, you can say it on here, but on a eBay, if you ever sell it, send any, don't say Velcro. But you so, probably already know that. This one's an archery hat. She's shocking. She hawking. $17. CDS. Straight. j and &E, Home repair. That one's cool. That's got to be 80s. Not used. No, Alan. There are no Bigfoot hats. No Bigfoot <laughs> hats. R.W. Martin. Automated laundry. American fire apparatus. Georgia. This one is a... It's not a snapback. Um, there's a Youth for Christ snapback. Youth it's for Christ is a big organization. Yeah, very thin snapback. I've never seen one that thin. It's weird. Um, headliner yeah. company. I've heard that of that. That one probably has some eBay value because Youth for Christ is huge. Yeah. I, re I remember Youth for Christ when I was a teenager. You know? um, and the last but not least, I don't know if you didn't work at this place, did you, Steve? You worked was down the road. You worked no, I worked at Lockwood. I sold a Lockwood hat last, last auction. Yeah. This one's brand new. This is like Bob Brando is a uh, car dealership in our town. Yeah, uh, sells Fords mainly. Does that say it Ford not. on it? Yeah, yeah it, it does. does. Ford, Ford on the side, Lincoln Mercury on the back. Um, Big it's car not, dealership. Not a snapback. It's a slider. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he wore any of those. Now KC Caps is this one. So that's probably yeah. still older. It's probably still '90s. I'm gonna guess. Uh, yeah. Robert, I believe there's 24 marks it. 20, well, I think that makes this makes it 25 when I threw this one in because I, I thought you might work there, so I thought that'd keep that for last. So I'll count. No, um, I don't know if you remember Frank Foy. Frank worked there. Okay. I am not selling my cowboy hat. <laughs> Stephen Strait is in at twenty dollars. <laughs> We're getting the final count. 
21 to Robert Bowman. There's 24. 24 hats. That's, that's, that's a dollar a piece. Under a yeah. buck a piece, yep. Good deal. All unused. No stains It's amazing on. that these hat collected. Now, the ones that I, I ha I'll have for the next few weeks, not tonight. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to go through them yet, but they're a lot of the foam is bad in them and stuff like that, but a lot of them are never worn. Krista Goose is in at $25. It's just over a buck a hat. Yeah, I think, I mean, a lot of collectors will have them, but then they just sit and that fabric just fits. Just yeah. But, I mean, you're finding the right hat. Uh, it doesn't yeah. matter. So, uh, yeah. John Deere, some of the old John Deere stuff, man, there's hundreds of dollars for some of those. Yeah, I had some John Deere ones and I could not find them. So I probably got them stuffed somewhere. It depends on what they are. Um, some of those are worth there. big money. Typical. And it's even straight in at 27. <clears throat> Need a drink Joe, or something? Joe, does not, Joe yeah. does not have a cold. That's how he sounds. Yeah, I sound like that all the time. Twenty seven dollars. We're gonna go once. Did it type that time? Of course not. I gotta keep putting my uh, there we go. my uh, cursor from one to one window to the other. That's why I'm having troubles. So. Pretty good deal there to Steven. Steven buys a lot of hats from me, so. What uh, I've always wondered, did, Steven, do you sell these all on eBay, or are you just a hell of a hat collector? Because he's, be he's got to have over 100 from me. 60 for my cowboy hat. Too bad, Alan. That cowboy hat probably, uh, how old is that? Well, it depends on which one he wants. <laughs> the black one, I won't even put on myself. It's pretty roached. And it goes 27 twice. Sell it. 27 twice. I'm going to sell this one a little differently. We're going to have Joe sell it like a real auctioneer. <laughs> Go for it, Joe. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight dollar anywhere. Twenty-eight, twenty-eight dollar. Got twenty-seven over here. Twenty-eight sold. Twenty-seven dollar to Yo. Stephen Strait. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> By the way, he's not a real auctioneer, but you, I have geez, working with you, you've practiced for years. Yeah. I try to get you to do it. I but do. I do benefit. I do benefit auctions. So yeah, I you've do. done the church auctions and stuff like that. Yeah, actually, we did a we did a real quick on that. We did a a clean out of a house for a guy, and instead of reselling it, we donated it all to a church to get their youth center um, finished built. You know, and it did really well. There was a lot of cool stuff in there that I wish. Uh, that I bought a little bit of it, but I didn't have the money to buy most of it. Yeah, there was some bought, cool stuff. I bought, I bought some some Bakelite stuff checkers from. there or something. They're Bakelite. They didn't, they weren't checkers. Yeah, I just wondered, Stephen. You buy a lot of hats. <laughs> uh, all right, these are all brand new hats. You can see some of them are Pittsburgh Pirates, but we'll go ahead and turn them around, and we'll start with. Let me give you a count first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I believe there's fifteen hats. Uh, first one is Raiders. This is a eight. These are all fitted, I think, except for these Abu Garcias, uh, these spiders. And I think there's an Abu Garcia in here. That's a size eight fitted Raiders hat, brand new. These are, uh, oh, what's the brand on these? Reebok. This one is Spider Wire, which is fishing at twenty dollars already. Uh, again, brand new. Another spider wire. This Abu Garcia does have a little dark spot there, but it is brand new. Um, this one looks like it's selling for about 20 bucks by itself on eBay. 
Uh, I keep forgetting the large screen. I'm sorry. Thanks for reminding me. But anyway, this Abu Garcia does have a little little spot, but it should be able to be clean. Yeah, these are throwback hats made by these are the Cooperstown collection. Who makes these? Uh, American Needle. So this is a seven and a quarter. Brooklyn Dodgers. There's another Brooklyn Dodgers. Seven and a quarter. Yeah, Rob in at 30. Oh, and then this you. one would be, I believe, Cincinnati. Is that their old symbol? I can't see it. Oh, shit. I don't know what that is. I'm pretty sure that's Cincinnati. There's a couple of those. Those are seven and a quarter, another seven and a quarter, uh, and another seven and a quarter. Yeah, big boss man in at 35. Oh, there goes my lighting. That wasn't good. Oh, I broke the light too. Well, now you got <coughs> Alan in it. I did more so I can get better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alan's in at uh, 59, so you can buy a light. Alan, do you know how to use PayPal? You got Alan at 59. What happened to my call? <laughs> Let's get back set up here. I think that's pretty good. There we go. All right. We're, we're back together. Yeah. Just trying to move hats. All right. This one is a Pirates. Seven and a half, and it's like got the Batman symbol. It's pretty cool. That's probably from when they shot uh, Batman in Pittsburgh. It says Cooperstown Collection on the back. Uh, I, this is a minor league hat. I thought it was Boston, but it's not. It's got the pirate symbol in the back, so it must be a minor league team for the Pirates. I don't know which uh, team that would be. That's the Boston uh, again, Pirates. Sure. <laughs> seven and a half uh, pirates. Another seven and a half, three eighths pirates. All right. As long as you know how to use PayPal, Alan, we'll, we'll be good to go. Seven and three eighths. Alan's good for it. I like to mess with him. Another one. This one is seven and three eighths and a seven and a half. So again, I'm going to count them out again. I think there's 15 of them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Doesn't want to go in there. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hats. We are at sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. These were all retail arbitrage, every single one of them. So I got them from a retail establishment. $60 will go once on that. There's some cool hats in there. They're all, except for the fishing hats, are all fitted. Boy, I got a lot of bright light now. I broke the bulb. It's just, it's like hanging there by the wires. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of precariously no cowboy hats, Alan. I'm gonna have somebody boot you here pretty soon. No, don't do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> As it's a long joke. Yeah, it's an old it's a joke. There was a time that I bit uh, in somebody else's auction. I booted a, a live bidder. <laughs> it was not good. And I haven't lived it down yet. Was it an accident? Go 60 twice to Steve Vash. An active bidder, I should say. I bidder, too. And it's only because he was promoting himself at the same time. So he was putting in there, go to my YouTube channel, I was bullshit. Yeah. And I'm like, mm -hmm. so I didn't see the bid, I just saw that. And I'm like, no, that's not in here. So... A good deal on these ones. I, these are nice hats. Well, Steve, why don't you throw your cowboy hat in there? Maybe you get a higher bid. Nobody's getting that hat. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to sell it. $60 sold to Steve Vash. Steve, you know the routine. Sorry, Rob, it's sold. Nope, oh, Rob, Rob came in at. 61 a little bit too late. Sorry about that, Rob. 
Uh, that's the only lot of new hats I have, but I'll keep on the lookout for more. I'm going to make Mark big now. Make me big. I don't so know how I to do it without sliding you up there. Well, well. So for those of you who are new to the the auction, if the chat that I see is the official chat, so if you come in after I say sold, unfortunately, uh, that is what it is. Uh, and sometimes it happens. Uh, Rob came in on my screen one bit late. So, sorry. But it does happen. I, I did that the bearded picker one night. So. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, so I, I uh, found a bunch of these... Uh, maps i'm really into collecting old vintage maps and stuff and uh these are all american automotive association one but they're all from the 1940s as far as i can tell maybe some 50s and they're all pretty good shape this one is a uh, southeastern state 1948 i only know that because it's written right on there very faded um they're cool they uh, are not ripped on the fold out they're all in there um, I thought it was cool to put together a lot. Rob, that, Rob, once again, before on my screen, it said uh, I said sold before you came in. Unfortunately, it does happen that way once in a while, and it's because of the lag. So I apologize. We'll try. We'll try a little bit harder next time. Go ahead, Mark. So yeah, I I, I put together a lot of these uh, 1940s, 1950s maps. Um, they're all triple A. I've got a ton of like triple A, like 19, this person hoarded these things for some reason. And I thought it was cool. Um, a lot of these will go for five bucks a piece on the internet. Um, in this era, of course, and some of them, uh, there's some more art deco style. Let me see if I can find one in that. Another, of course I don't have them ready, but the artwork on them is pretty cool. Um, I'll see a lot of these. They go for the lot. We'll put uh, about 15 of them together, 10, 15 of them together. Um, but somebody who's into, into antique cars and uh, vintage cars, like having these in the back windows of the cars or in the glove compartment, just because it tells the story of that time frame. Um, Any days in a 10. Alan, what are you paying? You I, you didn't buy anything. <laughs> just wants to give... Uh, well, I mean, if you want to give me money, I'll take it. Cheeseburger money. Um, Boston and vicinity. Some of these are really cool. Um, like this New England one. The artwork is really just like in your face. Um, this one I thought was the, was the coolest one out of all of them. And I think they had a series that looked just like this. AAA. Um, but it's, it's better to look up close. Just the artwork on it. It's just just so like stiff kind of like new york cold black um but it's all there i don't even think it was ever unfolded to be honest that one i believe is in in the 40s uh yeah that one's in the 40s not a 50s um more of them pa new jersey this one looks a little older this might be 60s PA new jersey these are all triple a triple a one so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and i'm going to throw an 11 11th in there and this one is a texas now i i could have sold this the other day to my friend roger because he's super into uh country music and all things texas and uh you really like this one, but I wanted to hold this one for this auction. It's a Texas 1956. Oh, wow. Um, it's a very, very good shape for the age. Um, and it, it's got to tell the whole history of Texas in it on the backside, as you'd imagine. But the artwork is really cool on this one. Never Too Old is in at 12, and I have no idea what Alan is doing. <laughs> Alan is... Uh, I'll talk, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> yeah. That one's that one's my favorite one. Like I said, that I had people already offer me money on this one, but I wanted to have a cool one for this lot. 
Um, so I threw that one in there. Alan, if you're throwing out numbers, you're going to get, you're going to have to pay. <laughs> that's for, that's for the hot cowboy hats. Dude. I am not. What about, it, what about that for that cowboy hat there comes mm -hmm. with this paper? I am not selling my cowboy hat. All right. We got never too old. Everybody in the chat, ignore Alan. Uh, $12 is never too old. New Jersey. Again, this New York one. There, like I said, I think they had a whole series that were in this color scheme, just with the black background and the, and the red and white. Um, I've seen, I've seen other states in that, but I thought that one was really cool. That's the keep it simple, stupid time period. Yeah, yeah. it's very, it's very mid, you know, mid century, very like stark almost three days in a 14 post-war artwork uh steve bash i've got your payment they do look in good shape though too yeah they're oh, nice. these ones are these ones are in very good shape you know a couple dog ears here and there but that's to be expected with a map I and mean, it's and these it's, ones are not from that pick right this one's this one's from somewhere else no this is yard sale this is a yard sale mary are in at 15 they were too old in at 16. What do I say? I got 11 of them here. That was the AAA one. I do have another lot of gas and oil, you know, advertising, if you will. I don't know if that's the word I'm supposed to say. But these are AAA American Motor Association. Here we are. Comes back at $18. It's a cool lot. Those are printed material. They probably could go media mail, but looks like they weigh under a pound anyway. So, first class type item. I'm bad at that. Everything weighs 100 pounds to me because that's usually what I'm picking up. <laughs> Mary R. in at $18. This one has a little writing up here. It's got the person's name on it. Apparently, they didn't want anyone to steal it. Eighteen dollars going once. I'll show that Texas one one more time. It's all there. So Roger wanted that one, huh? He really wanted that one. He wants he wants some old maps of PA as well. Number two old is out. We were talking about putting this in a music video. Oh yeah. So of course Mark being a musician, his friend Roger is also a musician. And uh but Roger's into some weird type of country music that I don't understand. It's like American folk country. Yeah. Willie Nelson. Very, <laughs> as if it's like as if Willie Nelson was uh was a you know a hip young kid right now. I think everybody likes Willie Nelson. That's that age. We're gonna go eighteen twice. I I just for some reason this New York one really speaks to me. I think that was cool. You know, it probably describes my personality. <laughs> Utilitarian. We're going to sell it. $18. Oh. 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 <laughs> I'm not typing, so somebody might get a second chance here. 18 So Before I hit it, I'm going to. I am first. Okay, I made sure. I get really worried about that sort of thing. You know, if I call a bid too soon or whatever. But it does happen on occasion. So not the first time. It won't be the last. All right, we're going to do... Well, since the last hat lot was good, we'll do one more hat lot for tonight. For me, anyway. I don't know if you have another hat lot. Uh, I do. I... We'll see. Mine's all right, vintage. these are all... Um, Mary R. loves the Texas map. That's what sold your lot, Mark. Uh, these are all vintage. I'll count them real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hats here. There's some pretty cool ones. She's from Texas. So we'll just start off. Again. The guy told me he went to the 96 Olympics. So... That is a 96 Olympics hat. 
pretty decent shape. First pick. This one has been worn. I think a good portion of these have. Uh, the brand is first pick on that one. That's the first one. Your know. screen is small. Uh, I will get used to this. It's almost like we're the experts here, Steve. I know, right? <laughs> All right, this is a cool roadway, uh, of course, trucking company, Roadway Express. This one doesn't look like it's ever been worn. Uh, just says polyester. It doesn't have a brand name. So that's Roadway. Uh, let's see. Here's a Texas Rangers, vintage Texas Rangers hat. This one has been worn. Uh, Designer Award Headwear is the brand. Interesting. Uh, this one just says Safari. I don't know. I, it was in the lot, so I put it in there. Steven said he sent money, Mark. We check now. Pacific headwear for this one. This one's not super old, but it just says Safari on it. This one's really cool. Lady Luck uh, Casino Hotel, downtown Las Vegas. Definitely a vintage hat. And a, uh, I don't know if Lady Luck's still there. But this one... Again, no brand name in it, but pretty cool hat nonetheless. Bargain resale is in at $10. Okay, the next few are going to be the same type of hat, and I got a few of them. So these ones are all Hard Rock Cafe. This one is Guada, Guadalajara, Hard Rock Cafe in Guadalajara. It says Guadalajara on the back. Allen's in at 12 This one's Singapore. Hard Rock Cafe, Singapore. And this one says, love all, serve all on the back. I don't know if you can see that. This is Hard Rock Cafe, Copenhagen. This is Copenhagen big on the back like that. Hard Rock Cafe, Orlando. We're going to resell at 15 the Copenhagen and Orlando are the same hat with just different names on them. Okay, that's all the uh, hard rock. Here's an old painter style hat. It says Kmart. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I yeah, like I it. Yeah, I remember this. Uh, and it still has a tag on it. So it's brand new. Oh, wow. uh, it's a little dusty, but uh, it is a painter's cap. Uh, Steven, Steven Strait, I have not received the money yet. I'm not sure if it's just not reloaded. It takes time sometimes. Here's a cool yeah. Disney hat. Uh, Goofy and Mickey and I don't know who the other mouse is there. Oh, that's Minnie. Uh, and Don Duck. It does say the Disney store, so I assume that's where you had to get that one. $16. Alan, we don't accept partial, you know, half part dollar bids. It has to be full dollars. You got 17 with Steve. That is a, you know, they're going to take over the world. Mason's hat. <laughs> I don't think this one's ever been worn. Made by designer award cap. That's what the inside is looking like. It's hard to see on this camera. Bargain resells at $20, Steve. All right, Alan, I'm done. Seriously. <laughs> I will have one of my admins. That's your last one. This one's cool. This one goes for about $20, $25 on eBay. Jack Daniels, Lynchburg Lemonade. I have moderators, but I'm not ready yet. I like Alan, but Alan's got to slow down. <laughs> USNS Leroy Grumman. Uh, here's another Mason's hat. This one says Multi State Outdoor Festival, July 22nd, 23rd, 1995, Defiance, Missouri. It's pretty rough. There you go. Start start behaving yourself, Alan. 1990 U.S. Open Pinehurst. That's probably one of the better hats in here. If you guys know anything about these hats. Chris the Goose is at 30. So what did I say? 20? 20, 20, oh, I forgot how many. Oh, you said 15 or 16 hats. I'll count, them up. I'll count them up again. You, as long as you follow the rules, Alan, you can stay. 
One. Two, Two, three, straight at thirty-two. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen hats. We at thirty-two dollars. Alan's in at thirty-three. As long as, like I said, Alan, I don't care. Just don't mess with them, right? I know we mess around back and forth sometimes, but not in the auction. This is not the forty and so. <laughs> Alan's a fan from the Bigfoot stuff and the, uh, you know, paranormal stuff. There you go. There's your hats. We're at thirty-three dollars with Alan. 34 was Stephen Strait. I had some. I, I had some uh, UFO paperback books I wanted to give you, Steve. Oh, oh. just like so stories, you know. Dumb Check stuff. the value first. I just thought it was funny. 34 once. Get a lot of hats here. There's some nice stuff in there. I don't know what the like Mason stuff goes for. That one's pretty cool. This one. With the patch on it. Allen's in at 35. Oh shit. Break another April. leg. How's, how you doing, April? <laughs> 36 to Stephen Strait. No, I dropped uh bearded picker a lot of games. Oh, you can't might, see it. You I can might see have it. To him. 36 to Stephen Strait, yeah. Give you that. I'll fix my white boy. Probably get shot. <laughs> These are special see. photo light bulbs. Okay. Alan oh, is out. I, uh, I yeah, screw it. I'm going to go I 36 got, once. I got some uh, photography gear from this pick house and I plugged in one of the lights because I needed a spotlight when we were working. And yeah. it actually is like an arc light. It was so bright. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the hell? I think it was a developing light or something without a guard on it. That guy was into everything. Everything. Uh, it's not It's not broken per se, the bulb. It's actually, I'd show you, but then it'd blind everybody. But it's a photo bulb and it comes in two pieces. There's wires and like resistors inside, and it's hanging on by the wires. So, all right, we're gonna go twice on this thirty-six dollars twice. I'm not sure I want to stick a potato in a light bulb though. I'm not sure if that's a great idea either. I've done it. I've done it too, but. What about that lighting, Mark? What about the tubes that we found for the for the big lights? Oh, the, yeah, I got that paperwork here. Now I won't sell this tonight because this is yes, yeah, that's Alan's well, in thirty-seven. The arc searchlights. Yeah. Yeah. That's, thirty-seven dollars going once. Yeah, thirty-eight. Oh, 38. It's a good hat lot. I, I'm pretty sure the, uh, sorry, I'm pretty sure the uh, Hard Rock ones are pretty decent. We'll go 38 once. I know the Pinehurst one is. And uh, probably the Texas Rangers one, the USA one. I mean, there's some good hats in there. Allen's out for a second time. You go out one more time, Alan. It's three strikes, man. <laughs> Thirty-eight going twice. And we're gonna sell it. Thirty-eight sold. Ah, I can't even type. All right, Stephen, you got another lot of hats from me. 
mean, I have not seen anything. I don't know if it's my PayPal just being weird from Mary or Steven. Might just, uh, just make sure you guys are typing in. You're too late, Alan. That's why I sold it quickly. <laughs> I'm just going to keep messing with him. Uh, anybody who's uh, paying Mark, make sure it's M A R C E E F I A N T at yahoo.com. Just double check Mark your one word. spelling. This These people it. are very good at selling, uh, very good at uh, paying. I know they've yeah. all bought off me before, so. Your turn. Cool. Yeah, I just received from Mary, so that's cool. I think it's just slow to show up. Yeah. Cool. So I got a, a small lot of uh, video game. What are these? The pamphlets. Inserts. Um, the inserts. Um, we pulled this from the same place we got the Nintendo Power stuff. Um, but the, the video games were not there, unfortunately. We had a lot of like. The, the slide things for them, but not the video games. And that was unfortunate. But I know from selling stuff in the past, actually Steve selling it, like you need the inserts sometimes. It, it's, it, people Steve, want who, them. who are you asking about? Alan? Who are you yeah. asking about Alan? Go ahead, Mark. Okay. So these are more of the inserts from a couple of these are the inserts from the Nintendo Power. Again, they were not from any of the magazines I sold before, but I figured I'd pick them up because they are pretty cool um, as posters. I think this is a Ninja Gaiden. Anyway, Alan is legit. I've, he's bought off me before, not during the auction, but some other things. But as long as Alan behaves himself, he's allowed to stay. <laughs> Alan has a reputation for not behaving himself. <laughs> so if I feel that Alan is not being legit, then Alan will leave. Very quickly, I'll have one of my moderators. However, Alan is allowed to stay for now. <laughs> Dragon Warrior poster. These are the posters, I believe, that tell you about the games. Um, again, I'm not a video game guy, but these came with the Nintendo Power um, magazines. And I know people love the original stuff uh, who are like completists and they need to complete their sets and, and if maybe theirs is damaged. So that's why I picked up a lot of this stuff because I know that we've done that in the past where we've found them and we've put them with the original games because that's what people wanted. Um, it, does seem, it does seem, Mark, that PayPal's having some issues. I can't even log in. Okay. Yeah, it kicked me off the computer. I got the, the, the main message saying Mary paid, uh, but I didn't see it in PayPal, so it's probably just having problems. Check your emails. Yeah. Um, so this is an owner manual for Crystalis. Never heard of this game, but that doesn't mean anything. 1990. Uh, this one's a Nintendo Dragon Warrior. It's all there. Nothing missing. This is a PC game, but I threw it in. I actually found this game the other day, um, but the guy wanted way too much. I wanted to put it together. He wanted too much, out, so I passed on that, but you've got it you need the manual it's here um this is an original control deck owner's manual for nintendo that's cool i know we've uh found a you know a couple of these in bad shape but this one is pretty darn near mint there's a little scuff right on the top here but when you're reselling the the original nintendo systems people want this piece of paper with it so that's a good one to pick up um jackal I don't know the game. Um, it's a 1988 pamphlet before people needed color to impress them. <laughs> um, it's for Nintendo. Here's the Ninja Gaiden. I think I'm saying that, right? Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden. Uh, insert for the game. This one I can't even barely read, so you can tell me. That says another. This came with all the games. This Ghost and Goblin one I thought was pretty cool. Um, it's another earlier, I think, or sorry, late 80s Capcom, Capcom uh, game insert. Wizards and Warriors. Um, we've got Link instruction booklet. 
And again, these are from the original when the games came out. They're not like reprints or re reissues of the games. So if you have the games, need the pamphlets, that's what these are. Never too old in at five because you showed the Zelda. <laughs> yeah. I know Steve told me to probably hold on to this Zelda one, but the Zelda one and the Link, and those are two the classic games, of course. <clears throat> um, I thought I'd throw this in there because this one caught my eye um, just in a bin of stuff at a yard sale, and, and I was like, I've got to check this game out. I didn't know Atari came with – this is a floppy disk. Oh, it's no. not oh, – really? It's not an Atari disc, you know, a regular cartridge game. This is an Atari floppy. Um, so I'm yeah. assuming before they did the video game consoles, they did this stuff for a I short think they did it at the same time, you know, release yeah. it on. Because they it would release, even Sears had an actual 100% copy of the Atari, which was licensed by Atari. Didn't that, say Atari on it. That we have that. I think it's yeah, the Sears. I one. have one. It says Atari on the bottom. It's not. An Atari on the yeah. top. But so this a, Serpentine game, the Serpentine game is the whole thing is there. Um, when they whoever bought it originally, I think this side was sealed and they opened it, but then they taped it. So I did not do that tape. That's original back in the day, so they didn't lose their stuff. Um, so this has all the papers. Was never too old. I mean, it's the floppy is there in good shape. Doesn't look like it was damaged or played much. Actually, you have a waves in at seven. Let's put this back in here. Now, I looked this game up, and it ranged from your without the uh, paperwork in there. It would range from ten dollars up to twenty five bucks. Of course, it's the internet, so it can tell you different things every day. But this one does have the paperwork with it, like the original registration and instructions. Got a little bit of a damage on that side. Never too old in at eight. I thought that was cool. Just for this game alone, I think it's worth a lot. That's why I wanted to throw that in there. Vivid Waves in a 10, and then Never Too Old comes back at an 11. So, again, if you're trying to put together the gaming, the game, uh, and you don't have them, I think that these help sell the games for a little bit more than, you know, your standard. But you guys know. We'll go through them one more time. 16 to Vivid Waves. I'm looking pretty good shape, too. Yeah, all of these came from the Nintendo Power um, pick. So they were right with it, you know, well, in the trash pile, I should say. Yeah. 17 to Steve Vash. But not trash. This one, this, what is this one? I can't even read that. I, don't, I can't pronounce that. Fax and Nadu. Fax and Nadu. It's got a little dog ear on the corner. But 18 that, is never too old. This Ninja Gaiden looks like it came straight out of the thing from the store. We got the poster in here as well for this game that tells you about the game. 19 Jackal. is Steve Bash. Jackal. I've never heard of Jackal. Yeah, I, I looked it up, and Jackal is the name of the band from the guy from uh, History Channel. Oh. He, he like count, count, counting cars or something, isn't he in Jackal? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's twenty dollars, like never too old. Twenty five, vivid wave. Vivid waves is getting serious. I must have saw something good in there. Yeah. So the control deck uh, pamphlet, no dog ears on it. A little tiny bend in this top corner, but as far as that, it's pretty darn mint for uh, being an original one. The the original console was sitting there, but it was already claimed. We couldn't touch it. Um, it would have been nice to keep everything together, but we weren't able to do that. 26, never too old. Indiana Jones, in case you're missing that one. 28, Vivid Waves. Dragon Warrior. Crystalis. I've never heard of that game. But again, don't take my... Uh, I, I was the kid who wanted to play outside and not play the video games. I was the... Although I, rem I remember the Christmas we got the Nintendo, though. Yeah, I was we allergic to fun. freaking excited. Well, yeah. And then, <laughs> then I played it, and I realized that I sucked at it, and I I was good at playing sports, so I went outside. I think we, we <laughs> found it before. Remember we found it in the closet, Mom's closet? Yeah, <laughs> I had to pretend Christmas. that we didn't see it. 
Twenty-eight dollars to Vivid Waves going once. But this Serpentine game, I just want to, I just want to play it. I'm sure there's like a, a, you know, a version on the internet you could probably play. But I'm sure. it's on a floppy, like Atari computer. Yeah. Well, Atari did make computers too. Personal yeah. Computer. Yeah. That that documentary I was talking about that's on Netflix. I can't think of the name right now, but it talks about why they named it Atari and they actually had to change the name from the original name because it was taken to Atari. And Atari basically just means, I think it means to to move or something. Or I forget what it was, but it's just like it. It's pretty much doesn't mean anything. They just picked the name. Going twice, Stephen. I'm still waiting for your payment. I'm gonna guess that there's some issue. Yeah, Steve, it's pretty yeah, quick it's, usually. It's doing the same thing for me. It, good it, says, I have, for you, it says I have Stevens, but it doesn't show up. Nope, there oh, it is. It showed it will, up. Then. Yeah, it will. Yeah, it showed up. Thank All right, you, we're going to sell it. Sell it. 28 sold. Cool. Good one Thank there, Mark. You. That's a cool one. And Just that went that to uh, Vivid Waves. Just for Serpentine alone, in my opinion. I think that's a cool piece. All right. Should be good now. And it is. Oops. Right. I need to go there. I need to do this. All right. We're going to do the 360 games. Not a huge lot. Um, I remembered to make myself big. You're catching on. You're not a rookie no more. Uh, I'm just not used to. I'm used to doing this myself. Yeah. And when I'm on the morning show, Scott does it all. So it's not my normal. Yeah. I, my I, normal gig. Oh wait. Normally David I'm said, the guy. Huh? Normally I'm the guy who does all the behind the scenes production stuff. Yeah. Well, there's not much production in this, but. All right. So you got this is regular Xbox. So some is regular Xbox. Some is Xbox 360. Uh, oh, Stephen was saying he had some issues with his internet tonight. Uh, so that's probably why it's taking a while. I'm glad you're still in here and being able to win some stuff because I know he likes the hats. So anyway, this is Halo 2 for regular Xbox. Got the it has thing. just the disc. Pretty sure most of these are pretty clean looking. Um, yeah, maybe some fingerprints, but not too much scratching or anything on it. Uh, I did test all these. They do play. This is Call of Juarez, Bound in Blood, for the 360. It has its case and its or its disc and its manual. I think that's the right manual. Let me look. Yep, it's just backwards. This was an interesting game that I couldn't figure out how to pay play. I mean, Blazing Angels. <laughs> uh, Squadrons of War, uh, World War II, disc only. Was it like the ET game? I don't know. I just I couldn't figure it out. Like you just uh, couldn't. There was no sense to it. <laughs> yeah, Ridge Racer Six with the manual. There's a disc only Rocksmith. I was actually in. I got the uh, 360 console. It was the. I don't remember the edition here. My mind is playing tricks on me. Um, it's one of the Halo editions, I think. It's a green one, anyway. And so, anyway, Rocksmith was in there. And the guy who sold it to me said he played a lot of Rocksmith. That was his favorite game. So, Halo 3 ODST for the 360. Both discs, both work. Uh, and its manual is in there. Halo. Apparently, like Halo too. Halo Combat Evolved, just a disc. Here's one of the limited edition steel pins, but it's pretty beat. Uh, but this is Halo 2. And it comes with its uh, disc. This is for the regular Xbox. It comes with its disc and manual. I'll check in a second, Steven. Halo 2 multiplayer pack. So you got two versions of Halo 2. Uh, in the multiplayer pack, which also comes with everything. 
uh, what is this? Project Gotham Racing 3. This one was fun. I like racing games because you don't really have to do anything. Another Halo 3. For the 360. This is a game disc, so I'm assuming there's an install disc somewhere. I don't know if it requires one, but it does say game disc down there. Brenda is in at 15. And finally, this one actually was I played for a while. Two humans with the manual. So that's it for these games this week. So I'm going to try to have more next week. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve games. Vivid waves in at twenty. Okay, this is not for sale tonight. This was the Xbox that it came in. Or came with. So it's the Halo 3 edition. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> uh, I need to replace the disc. disc in. 25 to Brenda. What the heck is going on with the <laughs> I don't understand. It's not doing that in real life. Steve, Steve, is that your Apple computer? Yeah. It's my Mac. It does, it does the, uh, it tries to auto correct the lighting. So you have to go into the settings. I thought I turned that off. Yeah, it's probably not off. Brenda's in at 25. Vivid's in at 27. Must be something in there they saw. I, I don't know. I didn't even look these ones up. I played them, I tested them, and I let them go. <laughs> it was, it's more fun to test them than it is to, <laughs> yeah. to do anything else with. They're not my style of games. I, I prefer like Wii Bowling, that kind of thing. 27 of Vivid Waves going once. You guys still want to continue going? Or? I got a couple small ones we can do that won't take very long. Okay, because I, I know you guys got to work in the morning, so. Yeah, yeah but we're young, we can handle it, Steve. What's that? I said, we're young, we can handle it. Yeah, but you usually go to bed at nine. <laughs> but I'm working right now, so. <laughs> 27 going twice. I don't know how late Mark stays up, but I know you go to bed fairly early. Yeah. I don't even know what we're doing tomorrow. Oh, we're... Zach Edwards is in at thirty. Better pay. So, now we're 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 tearing out windows, installing the sliding door. Zach, do you have oh, a three hundred and sixty? Right. What are you doing tomorrow? Uh, we're taking out windows and installing the sliding glass door, putting down floors, uh, do some plumbing. You know what I'm doing tomorrow? <laughs> None <Yeah>. of that. <laughs> Obviously. Thirty going. You're gonna pay me, Zach. Vivid Waves is in at thirty-two. Don't think you can get freebies just because you're my kid. <laughs> this is called business. But Steve, think of the, think of the shipping. The shipping's gonna be cheap. <laughs> I'll drop it off <laughs> in person. <laughs> 35 to Zach. Zach, seriously, do you have a 360? If not, let me know. I might be able to hook you up. <laughs> the waves is out. I've got four or five of them in the basement right now. I just haven't had the time to, to go through with them. Go 35 once. I just had. So what are you doing with them? You don't play video games. Why are you <laughs> buying my video games? You bought some for me too. I think he <laughs> just. I think he just wants to participate. That's fine. Zach's good for the money. I know he is. Because you know what happens if he's not. I'm gonna pull a Zach, and every five minutes I'm gonna post something on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you know what grinds my gears? <laughs> All right, thirty-five dollars twice. 
do not borrow money from Zach Edwards. <laughs> if you do, be prepared to pay it back on time. You make a great account. Yeah. Oh, Zach's not buying to resell. He's buying because I'm his dad. <laughs> I know what he's doing. But it's cool. 35. We're going to sell it to you, Zach. I'll drop them off maybe tomorrow. Well, probably not tomorrow. I have a lot of shipping to do tomorrow. Just make sure you have the cash when I come. Zach's the winner. 35. Sold to Zach. Yeah. All right. I'll um, make you big. Hey, so Thanks, this one's going to be a quick one. It, this one's going to be a quick one because it's only two pieces, but I thought they were cool. Again, I do more of this stuff than I do of the more modern stuff. Um, but I figured I'd test the waters with these two pieces. Um, the Leisure Hour Library was a magazine in the 1800s. Um, these are both from 1889. Um, one is August 17th, one is August 31st. And the Leisure Hour Library is a whole series. I think it went into, eventually went into hard uh, cover bound books in the early 1900s but in the 1800s they printed them out like this and you can find these on the internet they usually go from 25 30 dollars a piece um in this shape this is these are both charles dickens these are magazines from the from 1889 in great shape so i don't know if this audience is into the historical stuff um like i am obviously um, but this is, this is a small lot. So there's two of them here. This being the better one with the binding, this has a tiny bit of, um, you know, beat up corners here. But again, these, these generally go decently on the internet. Um, it's a good thing to have in an antique booth, live auction style. People do like these, um, the Charles Dickens Pickwick Club, I have the novel as well. Um, I don't know if anybody would be interested. I could maybe throw that into this lot if it helps make it sell. But this one, I have the hardbound copy of all of these stories. Um, they're not, I don't think they're illustrated on the inside. I really didn't go through them. Um, but this is something I thought would be cool. Maybe there's a nerdy history person out there that might want these and gets into reselling. Um, these items if not that's cool we tried it but it's two both of them come from 1889 these are not reprints i can tell you that um the paper is definitely gone brown on it because what of is the, it called uh what's the name of the book the name is leisure hour library they leisure came out Hour library okay yeah i think this, this would be something that you're in at 10. I think this is something you would find at your local like uh, newsstand, so to speak. Um, just a uh, just reading material for back in the yeah, day. Yeah, it's it's basically I mean, yeah. Even in some of the old news, even in some of the old newspapers, they would print some of these stories. Now this is a collection of stories in this one. The good thing is that those never made it to the outhouse. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Back. This was this was your toilet paper. So yeah, it didn't it didn't. Uh, it didn't and survive. Do. But these are cool. I, I, I just like them um, because they survived. And the full stories are there. Um, they, are, they are not illustrated in this. The hard cover book, I think, has more illustrations in it of this one. Little Dorit, I think that's how you say that name, is the second. It's Charles oh, yeah, Dickens. They, they do well. Yeah, these ones do well. Right now. Yeah. I, mean, I just some of, some of them do. The solds aren't. I mean, there's a lot of for sale ones. I'd have to do a little bit more research, but yeah, for sure. You guys know more than I know. the The cool. thing about it is, they're cool conversation piece for sure. Um, because what magazines survive? You know what I mean. Even even more recent ones are tough to survive. There's and, not a lot of examples of it, but maybe yeah. I spelled it wrong. I don't know. Uh, more of the 
more of the examples you'll find are the hardcover books that these go into later. It's just like the Harper Weekly. Those go into the the um, hardcover books as a collection later on because it is it's hard, it's really hard to find the individuals like this. Um, you know, in, in good shape where the cover's not ripped off or like half the pages are. I see some David up. Copperfield ones, but not that particular one. Yeah, this uh, Pickwick one I've I've seen recently. Um, Pretty cool. This one alone, it was twenty eight. Was selling for twenty eight. I again, I don't know more than that. It's a cool piece. All right, Texas Bandit still at ten. So you're getting two magazines. August of eighteen eighty nine. No advertising in, in those, right? No, this is just straight up story. No advertising at all. So I find that to be funny because, you know. How do you pay for it? But well, they whatever the cover price was on it. Cover price, yeah. Which on this? Oh, the one uh, going once. Published weekly by subscription per year, five dollars. So Shh. weekly, five dollars for, for the year. Pennies, pennies so, a week. Yeah. And you said nice eighteen eighty nine on those, right? These are 1889, August of 1889. The books that go with them, are they dated the same way or are they newer or older? Uh, the one that I have, I think, is 1913. The, the okay, so one. a little newer. Yeah, I think after the 1900s, they started putting them into the volumes. But don't take that my word for that because I didn't research that. I just, when I was researching these individual, I saw more of the hard. So more, since these are printed matter... Um, and no advertisements, you can send those media. Yeah. It'll be a little cheaper for you. We're going to go $10 twice. But those would do a little bit better, to be honest with you. Yeah. Might not be the audience for this kind of stuff. I just figured I'd check it out. Is that all the those you have? It's of this, yeah. Okay. I would say it might be a good uh, booth item. Yeah, it's just not these particular ones. I have rarely seen these because again they didn't survive. But um, other magazines, I have a few other 1800s magazines, um, but these are story-based ones. All right, last chance, folks. Well, I'm checking my PayPal here. Make sure everybody's caught up. Sell it. All right. And all are sold. It's a good deal. Texas yeah. Bandit, you want it. Like I said, just one of them. You're going to well make your money on that. And yes, Stephen, I did check and I did get your payment finally. He said he's having internet issues. So. Find something real quick. I have it. I just got to find it. I don't think Derek's in here. Oh. Every week, I want to bring you guys. I call it a junk drawer a lot. It's not really a junk drawer a lot. Uh, it's just things I throw together. I don't want to forget to do it. And I almost did. So here it is this week. And I'm going to make myself big. All right. So this week's junk drawer lot is, I don't know how many items, we'll count them up at the end. This is McCormick food color. It's pretty vintage. I couldn't find this coloring of a box on eBay. Uh, I, if it's a green one, it's usually a green box. But this has just a green drop with the red background, so I don't know. Probably worth a couple bucks, I don't know. Yeah, There's a lot really of that stuff cool. is $2, $3 items. Yeah, this is really stuff cool. I'm... This is stuff I know more about, like these kind yeah. of advertising. Here's a really cool Texas Instruments Datacron calculator clock. Uh, there's no battery in it, so I wasn't able to check it. But when I took the back off, it looks brand new. I don't think anybody ever used it. So, And it does have its original instructions. I don't know if there's any value in this one. It comes with a tiny little notepad, too. So there's that. Here is what every old car collector needs. <laughs> I got one of those. 
eight track cassette converter. Yeah. No idea if it works. Uh, I got really one of those. Cool, really cool light switch cover. This one I think goes for ten to fifteen on eBay. It doesn't need a cleaning, but it looks like it'll clean up really easy. I didn't see this exact one, but there's one with Mickey. So it's the same exact thing except he's in a night nightgown or something. Yeah. So it does say very lightly Disney Productions. So I know that helps date those kind of items. That is very yellow. Uh, here is Dandelion brand butter color extract of anato seed and vegetable oil base in its original box with the corrugation still in there. It's pretty cool. And that's what your bottle looks like. And it is got stuff in it. I don't think it's. Thank you, Texas those. Bandit. I got that. Oh, wow. What is that, Steve? It is dandelion brand butter color extract of. Oh, you know what that seed? is? I don't even know what it is. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you real quick. So they, when they started making like non butter, like margarine and stuff like that, yeah, there was a whole pushback from the dairy industry. Oh, and and so, and because people because margarine is clear, it's either clear, it almost looks like Vaseline, right? And so they dye it to look more like butter. And the in the dairy industry oh. was like no so that they introduced this stuff because they were regu they they lobbied and got it regulated and also people were were afraid of eating something that was clear almost like vaseline looking and so you would dye it you could dye it yourself so your guests dye your butter. that's crazy that's what, that's what that is so this is ink by script this is i believe black permanent jet black um this is foreign here the pieces inside, and there's your bottle. Oh, that's good. Strip ink. I got one of those back here, Parker. And the original price on it was 49 cents. Yeah. Uh, of course, you got to have one of these. Yep. And aid adhesive bandages. This is the Miro Chrome Pad version. I think this goes for about 10 bucks. Like yeah, a lot of those, the, the band aid. Tin cans they go for low end. I see them for like six, but ten bucks usually. This still has the cream of tartar in it. Uh, <laughs> the top of the box has come off, but it's it's in there. This is I could not find this on uh, line either. I found Durkies, but I couldn't find this a box that was always a tin. So I don't know if this predates the box or what. But I put it in a bag because I don't want the cream of tartar to come out of there. So these are top seal jar rings made by Presto. Uh, I think there's four or five in there. Let's see. Oh, there's a bunch in there. One, two, three, yeah, five of them. Just a, a lot of cool old vintage stuff here. Yeah, this is stuff that does well in in uh you know in your in your antique or vintage store resale. I I this stuff I do all the time best whole allspice Frenches. it is complete but the the lid is pushed in and i did not attempt to get that out of there because i don't want to mess it up but that's the bottom what is it French's whole allspice oh uh, if it was something that i, I was going to try to pay you to eat it oh you don't have to pay me <laughs> <laughs> we this found a we... sort of tooth whitener or something kept uh it says removes tobacco and other stains safely. Yeah, so that's what that is. It's pretty old. I think this is plastic, but that's that one. So the other day when we uh, got into this house, we we found some old food, and I had said to everybody else, I said <laughs> I'll pay you fifty dollars to drink this old can of soda that was you know well expired. It wasn't that old. And it was well expired, and and there was some other stuff. There were some pickles and stuff that were. They didn't look like pickles, pickles anymore. I don't think it was but I said the only person who was not allowed to take the the de the, the dare was Steve because I wouldn't even have to bet him anything. <laughs> he would just do I it. I would have drank that root beer for sure. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, Raleigh's medicated ointment, and it's a it's 
It's an older can. I, they still make this stuff, but yep. it's a fairly old can. And yes, it's in there, and it still smells medicated. Um, still because, use it. because I want to. Here's a transformer. <laughs> I don't. He does transform a little bit, but I think he's like a McDonald's toy. Just yeah, because tough. I like random. Here are some military patches. There's one. These are stapled together, so there's two there, two there, two there, two there, two there, and then these two. So those. And my favorite part in here. Ooh, it's getting warm in this room. Is this stuff. And let me move some of this around so we can get to it. This is, I think, the best thing in this lot. Um, I couldn't find anything on these. These are old State Fair ribbons from Ohio. Uh, Ohio State Fair. This is 1904, first place, first premium. This is also 1904, first premium. Uh, again, 1904, first premium. Another 19, 1904. And another. Wow. That's all 1904s. Wow. Usually it does disintegrate. Uh, these second place ones are starting to get pretty rough, but they're still here. So these are 1903 poultry second premium. Again, same. And another. This one says highly commended uh, eighth annual exhibition Cincinnati 1906. The Cincinnati Poultry and Pet Stock Company. It is a little rough. I'm going to check now, Mary. Uh, here's 1903 first premium. Another 1903 first premium. Mary, I did get your payment. Thank you. Again, 1903. They're coming in out of order for some reason today. Yeah, it's, it's, it happens. It feels weird. I can't get this out. <laughs> uh, here's 1901. So these are the oldest ones. Uh, and again, first premium Ohio exposition on this one. And another, these are pretty thin, but they are there. So that's the lot. That's everything in there. Um, if nobody wants them, we'll move on. But that is what you get. I think these ribbons are pretty decent. I'm going to open the door while you guys are thinking about bidding. Woo! Yeah, some of those some of those smalls are definitely two three dollar piece items all day long i mean any antique store this is how they pay their bills is these small items obviously if you're into that some of these have value on ebay i didn't look any of them up i i've had these ribbons for quite some time but a lot of this stuff is newer uh i just know i like doing these little junk drawer lots oh well i, I mean people Texas Bandit wants you to send him some information on your novel. Yeah. I will do that. He yes. also is into comic books. So I have a small lot them. of comic books. They're they're ghost ones or ghost related. Similar to what I sold on that one auction, the first comic books I sold. Yeah, it's it's actually from that same yeah. batch of stuff. Five dollars to Steve Vash. I'm gonna start putting these back in the box. Pretty good lot here, guys. If you're into this, this is stuff that I like to put up on the shelves around the house. Uh, yeah, some of it has value, some of it probably doesn't. But I like putting these kind of lots together, it's, it's pretty fun. I've had this thing for quite some time. The butter color, it's been sitting up on my shelf. Uh, I know alone, this is probably at least a ten dollar item, probably. Yeah, uh, I looked it up. The other one was ten or fifteen, maybe thirteen, something like that. A lot of the faces on those are wore off because of you know obviously. I don't think this one was ever installed. Yeah, we can't have been. And we're gonna have five dollars once. I'm still here. <laughs>
You just wanted to make me big for one time, didn't you, Steve? Got it. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Understand you want you want you want to give me that one one last one, didn't you? I I didn't hear a word you just said. I said you wanted to give me that last hurrah, didn't you? No. All right, I'm gonna go five dollars once. I don't know what happened there. Probably should leave that in the camera view. Yeah. The microphone is not cooperating tonight. My uh. Boom arm is getting weak. Five dollars twice. At least I didn't flake out all together this time. Like last week. Last week was horrible. All right, we're gonna sell it. We got a good deal here. So Boom, boom arm week. That's what all the girls say. <laughs> Give me one second, Mark, and I'll get you. Get you good. I think it'll be a little more ironed out for next week. Yeah. So I have uh, another lot of maps. These are all gas and oil related. Again, vintage 19. These, I'm going to say, are this lot is probably majority is 1960s. There might drop into the 50s on a few of these I see. It's tough to know on maps because sometimes mm -hmm. they print the, print the uh, date on them and sometimes they don't. And uh, these are all the, all of these maps would have come from gas stations um, in their era. So a lot of golf, a lot of Texaco. Um, some are older, but we'll go through them. Uh, got some Pennsylvania ones here. Golf. This, got a cool one. this Texaco one's cool. Pittsburgh. I got also got a Philadelphia one. This one's a little rougher, but it's uh, in good shape. Otherwise, it, there's no tears in any of these as far as when you fold them out, from what I can tell. A couple dog years here and there. This one looks a little newer. This one is, so this one's probably the newest of them. It's a dated 1970 Sunoco. Um, so we've got two in a row here. I thought, think we're cool. They're both Miami Beach, um, Miami and Miami Beach ones. One is American and one is Standard Oil. And so the Standard Oil one is definitely an older one because they changed their name. They're both fairly old though. Yeah, these are both old. This one's the older one of the two. And again, some of these older ones, like, so we got the standard oil one here. This one alone, you're probably getting 10 bucks for it. Anyway. If you, you know, put them up there and do the work. One thing uh, I've never sold is maps. Some SO. A lot of the car guys like to have these in their cars when they redo them, just because it's, like I said, the story that they can tell. Some golf ones. We got some Ohio and Michigan. A lot of these are, I tried to put them in order so I could go through them pretty quick. Ohio Steve and Michigan. Bash came in at 5 and Penny Day came in at 10. Thanks, Swamp. Thicker. Uh, see you next week, hopefully. Some 76, so Sunoco 76, some ESSO. Throw these down. Try to keep them in somewhat of an order. Some New England. Sacramento. Yes, Here's a Chevron one for standard oil, Phoenix. Phoenix. This one's cool because I, I didn't I didn't look this one up, but I thought it was cool. So the Wilshire Wilshire Oil Company of California. I wasn't hundred percent sure about this one. It must have been just a gas station out there. Thought that was cool. Enco Albuquerque. A lot of the Texaco ones I do see, they are they use the same similar style on them. I think there's a whole series yeah. of these that people are doing, putting together. Mobile gas, golf, 
Phillips 66, some golf, more golf. There's a lot of golf in this. I, I, I'm assuming this person who had these, it was in an entire box lot and I just separated the gas and oil related stuff. Um, cool ones there. Sometimes. So in North Carolina, that looks like a newer one. Yeah, this looks like a 1970s. 1970s here. Trans Canada Highway. That's cool. So these are these last few are Canadian ones. So these are Canadian gas and oil. What's this last one? Yeah, an Ontario shell. So how many you got there all together? I think I counted. I had 26. We'll count them up. We're so far, we're at $10 with Penny Day. Oh, it's going to suck to ship tomorrow. Oof. We've got all weekend stuff plus the auction tonight. Robert Bowman came in at 11. Actually, 30 of them there. And I'll be honest, this standard, oil, this standard oil one is is probably the coolest one out of all of them. It's a good yeah. subject matter. It's Miami. Yeah. This one's in very, very good shape. Penny Day came back at 15. This is the last of the maps that I have for tonight, obviously. I think we're winding down anyways. but Yeah, Robert Bowman's in at 16. Penny Day is back at 17. Robert Bowman says 20. These Texaco ones are cool. If you're into the, you know, collecting signs and stuff. And Penny Day is in uh, at 22. A lot of guys are into putting stuff like that together with a Texaco brand or the golf brand from that era. Standard oil. I mean, Robert they Bowman's did everything. At 25. So. Penny Day came back at 27. So I think there was a series done where the fronts are all the same on this. Yeah, there's, you know, I think maps generally go for 10 to 15, 20 dollars. Depends on what it is. That Miami Beach one might be a really good one. Yeah, that that one's probably the one in here that is very good. I, I'll see a lot of these when I'm out, you know, at, at full retail. I don't see them for less than five dollars a piece. Now, I can't speak for online because I'm not, you know, I'm just starting out on that. But we'll these, make you an eBay or after. Yeah. Know. I, I retired from eBay probably 15 years ago. <laughs> so that was a whole different kind of eBay. You were that was a whole different were, kind of eBay. You were doing Plus it for the just, record company, right? I was doing it for music. So we were selling overstock and stuff on eBay. So. $27 to Penny Day. That's when people still bought CDs and stuff. Yeah. Going once. This Richfield one's cool too. BB0647 came in at 30. 30. Cool, thank you. Wilshire. That one I wanted to look up. This looks 1950s, but I don't didn't take time to look this one up. Any days based, back in at 32. Based on the artwork on the back, I'm going to say it's 50 style, but you know how that goes. Phoenix. I've been literally everywhere all over the world. I've never heard of that name before. So $34 to BBO 647. Took a wrong That's turn. I took a wrong turn there once. Yeah. I love Albuquerque. It's dirty. That's what I like I've about never it. Been to Albuquerque. It's, I mean, you drive into Albuquerque, it's like, Looking at a different at night time, you drive in and it just appears and it's like a sea of lights, like staring up in the sky. But it's a sea of lights, and then you're in the city all of a sudden. There's a big mountain range behind it. It's, it's a great city. It's dirty, but that's how Albuquerque likes it. So, <laughs> thirty-four going once. I'll go through these a little quicker. So thirty maps, thirty-four dollars. It's a pretty good deal. Yes. 
I don't know if we have any antique boosters in here, but these things sell well, I know, for that. Yeah, this is standard. Plus, they stuff. sell on eBay as well. So, yeah, this Day is came back at 36. You're getting 30 of them. These are all gas station, gas and oil related. EBO 647, $38. I think that's pretty cool. I, I searched, searched, searched through all my maps and made sure that I got every single one that was gas and oil related out of there that I currently had that was vintage. Um, and it wasn't anything newer than, apparently there's one in here for, from 71, so nothing newer still than pretty, that. Still pretty vintage nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny to think about dollars that. to BBO 647 once. That's a good lot there. I mean, just selling this as a lot yeah. is cool. And I mean, you can see that they're not beat up at all. They don't, they're not torn when you, you know, open them up. It's good. I've got to go in reverse. <laughs> I know. It, it takes some learning. 38 so. twice. Poor guy, Wisconsin. Cool, sell it. We're gonna give it one more second, and then we'll. Oh, I always wait for it to show up in the other chat. So that oh yeah, yeah that's true. I've seen it. I've seen it. We're gonna sell it to BBO six four seven, and I, I've got that memorized now. <laughs> for thirty eight dollars. He's bought. He's bought for me several times. So I think it's a. <laughs> I don't know. I remember things like that. All right, I gotta find another lot here. You want to go one more, Mark? Yeah, that's fine. I got I got one cool. I got another cool paper lot of get rich quick scheme 1950s, 40s, 50s things. All right. So I didn't see Derek in here tonight, but this is a Derek kind of lot. Uh, these I don't know what these figures go to. Uh, here's a bunch of dice. First, of all. well, let me make this up. All right, I'm sure there's a a person in in this crowd who knows what these are. Some of them look like funky dice. There's all sorts of dice in this thing. Yeah, it's like a board game style. Well, some of them are board game style, but some of them are. Well, let me. There's some Dungeons and Dragons style ones in here too. Okay. Not too many of those. I think just one. They so qualify an original dungeon. Like that one. That's definitely a Dungeons and Dragons style. 27 sided. I don't know what it is. <laughs> 12 sided die. And this says armory on it, and there's dice in it. So I'm sure somebody in the chat knows what it is, but then you get all these dice as well. So. That's the dice. These, and this came out of the, um, the hoarder house. So these figures, I don't know what they are exactly. It might be Warhammer. Oh, that's what this probably is. Some of these are metal and some of these are plastic. Yeah. So there is a ton of them in here. Yeah. I didn't break this lot down. I will have to be very careful. Um, Sending these. This one here is plastic. Or the the figure's uh, metal. This one's metal. I think there are some, like the horse, he's plastic. So that little horse there is plastic. But I'm pretty sure, I think they're Warhammer. I have no idea. That's what it looks like to me, but I I never got into the role-playing stuff. No, I, I don't know either. But you can see there's a ton of them in here. I was told it was of the devil. I, I remember. I grew up the same same church. <laughs> uh, this guy's missing his arm, but it is in here. Um, I don't think he's the same as the rest of these. Uh, he's big, but he may be. He may be Warhammer too. So, here's another one. Some of these are broken, but I think most of the parts will be in here. This that guy was plastic, so there is a mix of metal and plastic. Yeah, probably just 50 of them in there, 100 of them in there, Doc. Uh, I would say closer to the 50 range. Probably more. I think I counted in the 60s. It, it was a, it was last week. 
This was supposed to be for last week's auction, and uh, of course, it ended. So, <laughs> I know I was watching it, and it just went completely blank. <laughs> BBO six four seven said he sent payment. And Got it. Thank you. So these are from the same guy who had all the uh, BattleTech figures. These are most of these are metal. This is a piece for one of them. So far, most of the ones I've pulled out are uh, metal. This one is pla feels plastic, but most of the ones I've pulled out um, are complete. Not complete. Dragons at ten dollars. That's a basis for something. They look like Lego, but they're not. They're the same base that this character has, except a different color. Some of these guys don't have bases. This guy's plastic. BBO 647, I did get that payment. Didn't know if you heard me. Thank you. There is. So this guy doesn't have his base, but there are, I think there's at least one or two extra bases in here. Maybe BBO 15. This I one's metal. A lot of, I think a lot of these. Yeah, this must be where the dice come from, too. Yeah, I'm going to guess. I don't know. I don't know. This guy looks like he's missing some pieces. He's got a dragon face of some sort. But he's heavy. He's metal. Yeah. This one's plastic. Uh, another metal guy. These metal guys are heavy. This guy took the time to paint all these, too. I had all the paint stuff. This guy's missing his arms. Yeah, well, that was part of it, right? I think that was part of the fun of it, yeah. Yeah, you created your own world. My friend Ken uh, was super into this. I don't know if he still does it, but he has a whole collection of stuff like this. This one's metal. If he is, let me know. I got a few more. Uh, this one's plastic. He is missing an arm. There's another metal one complete. Here's some unpainted ones. He's metal. Another unpainted complete. This is a big guy. Uh, I don't know if he goes to this set. He's a dragon of some sort. Funny part about a lot of this is some of these probably were, you know, more expensive than others. Yeah. Well, some of these are worth the battle tech figures that I have. Some of them can be worth 50 bucks on their own. Yeah, that's what now. I mean. Like, so and some of these, I don't know. I didn't even look. I have no idea what they are. So it's hard to look up something. You don't know what it is. You get eight dragons at 25. This guy looks like a rat. Yeah, I guarantee there's one or two of and now whatever brand it is, but one or two of these that are probably worth that alone. These aren't there's no name on them, so I don't know. Well some of them do. So if I I'll get one that does. That's another rat guy. All right, there's some words on the base of this one. It says GW nineteen ninety one. So whatever that means to somebody. Games workshop, I think that means. Game workshop. Somebody wrote a number nine on that guy. He's complete. Uh, another rat looking guy. He's complete. Unpainted. Where are we at? $28 to Vivid Waves. Another rat. Um, these are all early 90s. So I don't know what games were popular back then. Yeah, most of these guys are complete. There are a few broken ones. And there's a lot of pieces. I don't know if you can see down in there. There are pieces. Uh, this guy's, I think he might be one of the Battletech guys snuck in there. So I'll throw him in. Another rat. Another rat. There's a lot of rats in here. This guy's missing his arm. He's he's plastic. If I pick one up that's plastic, I, I let you know. So there's some sort of gun. Leave it over there. This guy's metal, but he's real tiny and no base. Another rat. You get a chance to watch that documentary on Netflix about video games. They talk about these games in particular, too, not yeah. specifically this one, but how they impacted how video games are played now and why they created role-playing games yeah. in the digital form. This one's uh, plastic and missing his arm. It seems like a lot of the plastic guys are broken. Probably because the way they were stored in here. He's plastic and he's complete. Some of these games uh, could take a, a year to play. 
Uh, you know, one you, I was watching a YouTube video. Derek sent me a YouTube video on some of the setups they have to play these games. And yeah, it's, just it's a amazing. whole world. This one's yeah, broken. That last one was plastic and it's broken. Uh, here's another metal one. Seems like all the metal ones, except for that big one, and maybe one of the other ones, is they're mostly complete. This guy is unpainted, complete metal. It's just a base. I'm not going to pull all the little pieces out. It's this amazing. Missing it's all uh, here's a huh? This guy probably spent so much time on these. It's amazing. They're all painted. Yep. Here's a plastic guy who's complete except for a base. Here's another metal guy. He's complete. Another metal rat. Oops. Another rat. All these rats are metal and complete. Uh, this is plastic. This one's actually pretty cool. He's complete, too. So one of the plastic ones that is complete. I'm going to try to get through them all and count them up for everybody. There's another metal guy. He's complete. got to be 60 of them there. There's more than 60. There's a... Two battle tech guys. So there are a couple battle tech figures in here. And those ones, yeah, like you said. I don't know what that is. It looks complete, but it's metal. This one's metal. Complete. Vivid waves yeah. in it, 32. No base. There's another rat. Uh, this one's complete. It looks like discolored, but he's there. And another rat. Holy lord, there's a lot of rats in here. Maybe he had a legion guy. on him. Another metal guy complete. Lots of little parts and pieces. Another metal guy complete. Metal complete. Plastic complete. Uh, plastic looks complete minus the base. Another plastic guy looks complete minus the base. What do we got? Left? Is that okay, like a foam? Metal. Does that have a foam bottom in that box? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, another it's, metal it's guy. This, I don't know if he's from the same kind of set. He looks different, but he's complete. Super nerd and here. There's one more. All right, so I'm going to count these, and then we'll, we'll count it down. And it, you guys can see in the bottom of the box, there's some parts and pieces. This this is the arm for that big guy over there. Uh, looks like it could be glued back on. Eric says he restores these, so I know it can be done. So we'll yeah. count them up and then close this one out. One, two, three, four. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, eight, fifty-nine, sixty, sixty-one, sixty-two. We won't count that. 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 71. 71 pieces. We're at $35. Uh, those in the chat, can you tell me if there's a, a echo? Because I can hear myself. I don't hear you. Right. I don't hear that. 36 uh, once. Yeah, you guys usually won't, but the chat will. Oh, oh, Vivid Waves came in at 40 before I typed that. What did I say? 71? 71. And of course, plus those uh, dice. Vivid Waves at 40 going once. Oh, since I opened the door and turned the fan off uh, on in the kitchen, it feels so much nicer. I got I got these photo lights on. Baby dragons came in at forty two, and then vivid waves came back at forty five. I'm gonna switch screens so it's not just me. 
Uh oh, your wife is on camera. You ran yeah. away. She went out and bought me a new TV for there for, for my room. Oh. It's like a private room now or yeah, this is my private room. Yeah. Uh forty five going once. Let me type that in here. Baby's out. Vivid waves at forty five dollars. You say hi. You say hey, hi, Sydney. Sydney. Say hello. They're bringing out the big guns now. Absolutely. Getting the sympathy vote. <laughs> I don't know if that's that's not the right thing to say. No. But you know what I meant though. Forty five yeah. going twice. <laughs> Oh, I'm waving, but she can't see me because I'm not on camera. But she can see Uncle Mark. Hi, Uncle Mark. <laughs> We're going to sell this one. $45 sold to Vivid Waves. Yeah, there's there's got to be a piece in there that's... I. You know. It's not my game. I don't know. I've, I've been selling off all the Battletech ones, too, which are a little bit bigger figure. Uh, vivid. Oops. Yeah, I've, I've seen them set up, and some of those setups are like so yeah. ridiculous. And again, some of those games will take a year to play them. So sometimes it takes a year to set them up. <laughs> I mean, they they make those. It's so elaborate. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. All right. What is this? Our last lot? Is this what we're doing, Steve? Uh, yep. I mean, I have one more. If you want to go one more, but it's up to you because I know you guys got to work in the morning. I've got, I've got two. They're both paper you just, lots. No, you tell me when to quit. Yeah, I got, so. I got paper lots. So that's what I'll finish them off. Um, All right. Then I'll, so do, this I'll is, do at least one more. This is uh, more of the get rich quick scheme advertisement packets, the full packets. I um, separated them in this binder. Um, I don't, I think Steve said before that the binders are a little more expensive to ship. So we might have to take them out of the plastics, but I wanted for, for display reasons. It's easier for me. Maybe um, I will not have a monopoly tonight. I'll have to consider uh, one of them. I think is spoken for. So I only have one left after that. I will let you know. If nothing so, else, I'll get you one that you can send to Scott or whatever. Go ahead, Mark. So this is, I just pulled out one comic book that I have just to show you that, that this is really coming. A lot of these things come out of comic books where they would, you know, as a teenager or whatever this guy was at the time, he would, he would order from the comic book, the get rich quick government surplus. Um, there's one, um, in here, boys, here's a swell way to make one to five dollars weekly. So when he saw this, when Lyle saw this, he was hooked, and he and he spent the rest of his life doing this kind of stuff. Doing different and, ventures. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's. I mean this one is about making soap and other chemical like soaps. So he would uh, and he went through and he circled the ones that he wanted to order from them. Um, so make soap at home. And sell it kind of stuff these these are in immaculate condition it's almost like they were mailed yesterday to his house um, but they are from as far as i can tell yeah 1951 so this i think is, he tried one of everything just yeah judging I, from I, the paperwork i don't know if you can see that i don't know if it's focusing but mm. 1951 on this one so it's it's amazing it's almost like spencer's gifts you know, when I have a catalog somewhere of Spencer's gifts from back then, that's that's what this is. Spare time, the magazine of making money. This must have been what uh, Donald Trump got when he was a kid. 1961. Uh, yeah, 1961. And this is where this next section of stuff comes from is the Merlite brand stuff. Um, you'd sell everything from fire extinguishers to um, light bulbs. And I mean, some of these things are ridiculous, like learn electrical appliance repair. Yeah. You know, and you would then go into business for yourself. Um, 
the home import business. He, we found a lot of that. He was really into importing goods before, um, before like NAFTA and stuff like that. Took. Here's a sell dentures to people kind of thing. So that's a full February 1961 catalog. Again, you'd get that from, probably get it from a comic book like this or, you know, maybe uh, another, you know, a teen magazine. Um, let me pull these up. So this is an example of what you'd get sent to you. You'd get Presto, you get the pamphlet. And I've separated these into different pages because it's just easier to understand. Um, the artwork is pretty cool. That's what grabs me. I'm, I'm into the artwork of things. Um, but they, they would basically get you to go door to door and sell their fire extinguishers for you or for them. And, you know, who knows if they worked. Um, I did find a couple of them in rough shape at the house that we just picked. Um, the fire extinguishers? Yeah, I found a couple of them. They're, I mean, they're so far gone that you can't read them. They might might be able to be buffed out, but logos and stuff are gone on them. Um, but it was pretty cool. I think so this is what he would flip through for a client. Yeah, so, so he would take this to a client's how, house. Yeah. This is my favorite part of this, and this is why I wanted to sell this one. Get this in the screen. Now I'll never be terrified if something catches on fire. <laughs> Thanks to this amazing new wartime discovery, science's new midget miracle. And look at her. I mean, she's just like, oh, save the children. The kid's still afraid, though. Yeah, the kid's, the kid's like. kid's terrified. The kid's like, this is a gimmick. What would you buy this thing for? <laughs> the house is on fire. But I have a couple of these. And these are these advertisements. Or actually, they're not advertisements. I guess they are, but it's they the, basically it, are, yeah. It's the catalog that you take to somebody's house. They are they're in next to mint condition. There's no dog ears on them. I have These two copies of great this. Wall hangers. Yeah, this is something. Uh, in fact, today my neighbor is he's a tattoo artist, and he stopped by, and he bought a couple of my duplicates out of it right away. He, I didn't even have to mention it to him. He was like, "Give me those." Um, yeah, I sold him three pieces of paper out of this you know it was it was it was pretty cool and like this is a lot of a lot of tattoo artists they like these kind of obviously we've got fire extinguishers but they like the artwork on them because they're bright they scream at you um here's a green you could sell each individual page because they're like separate yeah they're based they're mini posters and they're meant to be given to like if you go to their house you drop it off you know here's the uh and pull one of these out. So if you're the salesman, you can go to the local newspaper. You can hand them this to uh, mimeograph or uh, lithograph or whatever it would be and put it in the newspaper so you can advertise your business in town. Again, this is all good, rich, quick stuff. It's not, you know. I'm sure the extinguishers worked, but. Yeah. I hope I they worked. Yeah. They, they did make real product, though. This one shows them like pouring gasoline into a toaster. Or yeah, a pan. That makes sense. Yeah, throw it in a pan. This is telling the. This is basically telling the salesman to do this in front of people. Like you would be able to get away with. Wait, that what? They told the salesman to pour gasoline in a toaster. Yeah, pour gas, pour enough gasoline, benzene, napa, lighter fluid, or highly flammable <laughs> liquid in the cover of a bottom of a pan. Do not let any fluid spill over to the sides. And then it, and then it like tells you to do this in front of people <laughs> now this is remember this is advertised to kids penny, penny days and ten dollars i i just think it's cool that it i that used it to survive. i used to work for filter queen you know that's a yeah. good rich quick scheme they yeah. made you pour dirt on people's carpets we yeah. went into a house one day that had white carpets <laughs> that did not go over well <laughs> yeah it's like how do you how do you piss people off in two seconds? Go in their house and put dirt on their. We covers. did not make the sale, but anyway, penny days in a ten. So. so we got more advertisements that you. This is a full page advertisement that you would give, you know, to the local newspaper or whoever. Um, this is some good stuff. Yeah, 
it's just cool. Like they're full. They're not. I didn't get a chance to see all these. I, I saw a couple of them while I was there. This, it was in the file cabinets. I mean, straight oh. out. I, I think he put it in the file cabinets the day he got it and never went back to it and it didn't get damaged. Oh, now um, we're into the light bulbs. Yeah. So it's the same company. Merlite. This one's cool because I have full posters and they're all in good shape. I'll pull one out. I'm going to pull out four of them, I think. I'm going to look one of these up. These fold out. We also had some spark plug ones, but they are not from this company. But these are the, uh, I mean, this is the paperwork you would have to sell your door to door salesman stuff. For you that can buy. You can buy Merlite light bulbs, vintage ones. Yeah, Funny. they still. <laughs> so I'll go through these a little quicker. Um, yeah, fire extinguishers, light bulbs, light bulbs. You didn't find Lots any light, light bulbs in there, did you? We did, and I didn't think to stop and, and check to see if they were this brand. Yeah. Um, we were using them to see in the house. We are plugging them in. <laughs> I'm sure some of them may have been. Here's how to keep the here's how to keep the door open for extra sales. Here we go. We've got the Merlite fire alarm. These I have seen on the internet. You can still you can get these in the boxes. I'm assuming they survived because they were right at that size. Um, they that these actually go for five to ten dollars a piece in the box. Um, I don't think a lot of people bought it, to be honest. I think that this was something that, you know. Oh, the fire! I just looked them up. The fire extinguishers were tiny little things. Yeah. More. Uh, yeah, they basically you just used it. It's a one-shot deal kind of thing. So I'll get this real quick. This one is a burglar alarm, and I think you just hooked it to the chain on your your uh, door. It retailed for six dollars and ninety five cents apparently. <laughs> the uh, the fire extinguishers are about the size of a mace nowadays. That's how tiny they were. Some of them. Yeah. So this one is for like a burn cream. I I imagine that it's kind of like that stuff that the the European soccer players or football players put on themselves when they hurt their leg. It's just like air and you pretend it doesn't hurt anymore. That's what I imagine this stuff actually was. Still at ten dollars with Penny Day. It's cool advertisement. I think a lot of this stuff would do well if it was framed individually. Some of the cooler prints. Um, I've got a good example up there on the wall, which you can't see, of that. Back here in my stack of shit in the, in the warehouse. This is the last of the get rich scheme stuff that I have for the night. Um, he actually, and I wish we would have saved the paperwork. I don't know what happened to it. It may be in one of these piles. He got this is from this is from a comic book, um, The Adventures of Six Men. It tells their story through this pamphlet. It's the Texas Refinery Corporation. Basically, they wanted you to invest in their oil field, and, and everybody knows in this era, they were just they were just showmen. You know what I mean? They were just trying to sell people holes in the ground so they could make their billions of dollars. Um, and he rode into this company and he got hired by this company um, in the 50s. And this he had it all with this paperwork. Uh, I don't think he ever went to Texas to do the job, but he, he wanted to be in the oil fields in Texas. So here is the here is the whole pamphlet of that. I wish that I would have saved. There. Yeah, I wish I would have saved the, could have saved the, the letter and response that he got from the oil field saying, Oh, we're going to give I'm you sure $15,000 a year. You know, it was like ridiculous numbers for that time. Right, we're going to start counting this one down, but it's a cool one. Yeah. Well, you guys are missing out. I think, yeah, I think there's is... some money here. Yeah. I mean, if you got a couple of the little fire, uh, the little fire extinguishers or the, that I think people would be like, "Whoa, this is the whole, the whole thing," because you you can find those. You're not going to find these. Yeah, there's you, a bunch of fire extinguishers on eBay right now, but yeah, no unless you're unless you find Lyle, another house that Lyle had. 
<laughs> I'm sure a few people kept them, but it's something very rare. Yeah, it's that doesn't rich. make it valuable, but it does make it very cool. Yeah, Rob Bowman's in at eleven. Thanks, Rob. There's people who are just into oddities, and I think that's what this category would be. So, I think that Texas Refinery one's probably one of the better pieces in there. Yeah, but any of that Merlite stuff has got to be. I mean, there isn't any online. I, I looked. Yeah, fifteen dollars. Yeah. To Rob but if Bowman. you look up the company, there's tons of it. Merlite actually, I think, was around until recently. I think they think in the end of their company. Oh, wait, I'm confusing that with the, the engraver thing. Some of these companies, the get rich schemes, they were around in the 90s selling oh, yeah. stuff to people, you know, get rich quick scheme stuff to people. And they, they uh, you know, I think the era of the internet change that all because everybody <laughs> it just it just moved to the internet i mean it's yeah. still there trust me yeah. night penny uh rob bowman <laughs> 4 15 why are you gonna get up that early uh rob bowman's at 15 we'll go once since penny's leaving it's a good deal if you get that for 15 dollars. i'd be tempted i'm trying not to bid on your stuff mark <laughs> yeah I gotta come to your house and get your uh, get stuff out of your garage. Some of it. Taking space up at your house. She works at uh, Penny. Works at FedEx Ground. Oh. Okay. So. Night, Penny. Thanks. Uh, both Mark and I. I don't know if you bought anything for me tonight, but Mark will get your stuff out of here in the next day or two. Yep. For sure. Try to anyhow. I'll make sure. I'm gonna coordinate it with Steve. Make sure. It'll be easy. 16 to BBO 647. Thanks. I don't know if anybody wants to see them again. I think this was the best example of the the, uh, the get rich quick scheme stuff because it's got the whole I, list. I like the fact that you got the catalog. I think that's neat. Yeah. This guy Rob here, he's like, I'll finance you. It's it's just all like huckster kind of stuff. Where I think it'd be it'd be neat just to go through and look at. It, it would be neat to write some of these companies to see if they still exist. You know, because some of them do. It's it sounds ridiculous. Look to them say up that, and see if they do. Yeah. Some of them do. They're just doing different. Twenty five dollars. The BBO six four seven. I think the engraver engraver print ones. They were selling jewelry as as far back as nineteen or as more recent as nineteen ninety six when I looked it up. Um, so, but yeah, I'll finance you. It's all kinds of new home import business. This is like every every get rich quick scheme Mama. shit. Twenty five <laughs> once. The easy phone. I I uh I found one of these easy phones, but it was no good. That's I think another Merlite product. If I I think so. Yeah, that's another murder light. So there was one of these at the job, but it was destroyed. Unfortunately, a lot of things were that way. It's just... Yeah. I think yeah, he had samples. Sort of a, he was a cleaner type hoarder, but he was a hoarder. Yeah. Uh, when he, all of this stuff was in, was in violent cabinets. I mean... We well, up, until I think, up until I think he, he could not move around as much. But right. I'll tell you that he died with... He died with... You know, I don't know if he died at his house. I don't think he did, but I think he died with sleeping with his stuff in his bed. He it was it was that kind of hoard where he 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 really cared about this stuff so much that he was living around it. And Twenty-five it was going all, twice. It was all. This was his entire life. I yep. think that was cool. Uh, just a reminder: Mark may or may not choose to ship that with the binder, depending on where it's going. Yeah. You'll leave them in the sleeves, though, right? Yeah, I'll leave them in the sleeves. I usually on comic books and stuff. I'll put the sleeves. I think you know, trying to keep things as nice as possible for people. Well, that stuff's so nice that it, it deserves to be sleeved. Yeah, it was in a it was in a, a Manila envelope or not envelope, but you know, a folder, and I couldn't just put it in a stack of papers and ruin it after all those years. All right, we're gonna go ahead and sell that one to BB oh six four seven twenty five dollars. 
Uh, Did you say you had one more, Mark? I, I have another lot of. I have another lot of paper. If we get to it, do you want to or not? Yeah, it, okay. it's fine. Hold on a second, then. I gotta find my last item. Here. It ain't your cowboy hat, is it? No. <laughs> I think Alan left us long ago, anyhow. <laughs> Alan doesn't realize how close my figure was on that trigger. <laughs> All right, I found it. It's just All right, we've sold something like this in the past, so we're going to try it one more time. This is a little bit different than the last one I sold, but. You got to bring yourself there. You go. Yeah, it's just gonna take me a second. I'm gonna move the camera so you guys can see me. There you go. All right, this is a Ford jacket. There's one listed on eBay. I haven't seen any sold of this particular. Uh, and trust me, I will take the uh, the lint roller to it. It's it's got a little bit of cat hair on it, but not bad. Um, let me see what size this is. This is an XL, so it would fit me. But you got Cobra, SBT, 4.6 liter, 5.0. This is made by uh, the same company that made that basketball jacket I sold, JH Design. There's the tag. Got the care tag. I don't know when they made these, but made under license from Ford Motor Corporation. Is that like a cool. dealer type? No, they. I don't know where they sold these things. Why is it upset? Uh, I think they just made them and sold them, and people really took to them because they were... Um, Got the payment from BBO647. Thank you. Close enough. <laughs> uh, it says since 1964 up there. I don't know the actual... It was a little of fuzz hanging off. I don't know the actual value of this jacket. There is one exactly like it listed for 100 Uh I haven't tried to list this one. I found it at a yard sale. I thought it was cool. Rob's um, in at five. I, I know that that other jacket uh, was a really good one. You find the ones that had the NBA logos all over them. Those are pretty good. And that, I sold one, that one on this show before. So that's the big patch on the back. It's hard to hold here. It's a little Ford symbol right there. Let me zip it up. It is a hoodie, too. And I will take, like I said, the lint roller to it before I, before I send it out. I left it out on the kitchen table today, and the cats decided they were going to sleep on it. Yeah. So if you're allergic to cats, this isn't for you. It doesn't matter what you put out. They'll just lay on it and matter. The legend lives, it says. So this oh, is the front, and this is the back. What year is that? I don't know what year this jacket was made. I'm going to guess late 90s, early 2000s. Some, I, th I wonder uh, if that's a, when they reissued the Mustang. I don't know. Ten, $10 to Vivid Waves. Cool jacket, though. It's uh, extra large. I don't have to hold it up anymore. So this is the front. Uh, it has two pockets in the front. One on each side. It has a little bit of pilling, but it's not horrible. Um, this is what the inside looks like. More yeah, of a, Rob, you're you're not a winter, winter jacket. What would you say, Joe? I said you got Rob, Rob back in at 15. Mach 1 there. SVT 260, Boss 302, ET 350. This says Legend Lives. On this arm, it says Shelby, uh, Cobra Jet 428, SVT Cobra, GT 4.6 liter, 5.0. Here's the back again. Since 1964 at the top. And then the big Ford Mustang logo on the back. 
There you go, is the jacket. If it waves in at 20. I almost kept this one. I'm not a Ford guy. I've driven Fords, but it's a nice jacket. And it fits me. So, well, it did before I gained all this weight. Look at this. Bring, 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 bring. <laughs> That's not from beer, is it, Steve? That's from the cheeseburger donations. <laughs> That's from a lot of cheeseburger donations. I don't drink, so it can't be that. All right, we're going to start counting it down. If nobody else is interested. 21. Oh, I'm going to have to move that camera. It's just annoying me. Oh, no, that's worse. Here we go. Now you can't see my tummy no more. <laughs> I gained, since the whole COVID thing, I've gained, pro well, I weighed 220 at the beginning. On March, in March. I weigh 255 now. I gained a lot of weight. You need to come to work with me, Steve. Uh, that, we, we, we can make you lose it. Yeah, I don't want to lose it that bad. 21 <laughs> to Rob Bowman. I worked with you before. I know how that works. <laughs> I think I, I was the guy who, well, you're former Amish, so you don't believe in rooftop delivery on shingles. <laughs> you carry them up ladder two at a time. Uh, I never carried them up two at a time. I could barely get him up one at a time. <laughs> I still recall that day down in uh, Espyville there when we doing that roof job. Oh, yeah. Mobile home. Yep. Mobile home. <laughs> yeah. Were you on that one, Mark? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because me and Mark, we laughed about it because it actually felt bad after we laughed because you was like crawling around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my, I, so. That's the first First time I ever threw out my back. And I probably, that's probably when I herniated the first disc. Yeah. So then 15 years later, I I did similar thing. And it, that is the worst pain you'll ever feel. And I thought about that exact moment. 21 <laughs> months, I couldn't move. I, I laid move. in the car the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, because we were out in the middle of nowhere. So we, you just laid in the car. Yeah, now that's why I don't do this shit. But I just <laughs> continued to do it for a long time. But to remember the last day I worked for you, it was I picked up one piece of siding and I couldn't even do that. And you're like, I can't let the customer see that shit, and, which, which you can't because you can't be, you can't have a hobbled old guy working on your job site. No, definitely not. Vivid Waves came in at 23. <laughs> Yeah, my wife wondered why I bought this one. I'm like, well, I like it. And <laughs> that was gonna be your winter coat. Oh it's it's not quite a winter coat, but it's it's nice, it's thick and warm, but it's not super thick. It's more of a that was, that was gonna be your fall coat. <laughs> but she's like, You don't even like Ford, you like Volkswagen. I'm like, Oh it's a coat. Well this so next time. Talk about that, Steve. This next house that if we go to pick it, I saw BM. I saw the B, uh, the Volkswagen Beetle parts in the in the garage. Well, you know where those are going, right? Right to my house. Oh. <laughs> Twenty three months. Yamaha motorcycles too in there. You know. So if you guys don't know what they're talking about, I don't think we mentioned it, but you guys went to look at another pick house, which you actually get paid. To pick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rob, as far as I know, there is no tear, tears, rips, stains, holes. Uh, the only wear on it is there's some pilling. Uh, due to, of course, all anything of this age is going to have that. So I'm going to guess this is probably late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere in that range. I, I, but I don't know. So no, no actual tears or holes that I've noticed in it. I don't think it was worn a lot. You go 23 twice. 23 twick. I can't spell. So, uh, Rob Bowman's in at 25. Joe has a bunch of fishing stuff. And Joe was wondering whether you folks would be interesting. What, fishing lures and reels and things of that nature? 
got some reels, a couple Johnson reels uh, that we got. Mo Joe, I think you've got a lot of lures and stuff that you picked up over the last few years. I've got probably 5,000 words. Yeah. And we do a lot of work. He's interested. We do a lot of work for campsites and stuff like that. And, you know, when you do construction work, people are always looking to, you know, trade off or even just if you're interested in what they got, they, they want to just give it to you sometimes. But uh, most of the time, it's the old guys. If you strike up a conversation, they're willing to part with a few things. 25 once. Yeah, I've got I've got some I've got some of the old vintage wooden musculars. What were those big lead ones that we got the other day? Were those for fishing for what was that for? That's uh, that's your downrigger weights. Like these giant I mean they were like this big. <laughs> yeah, that's your that's your downrigger weight. Which I mean, that'd be pretty, twice. That'd be pretty expensive to ship because that one weighed like oh, eight yeah. pounds. You well, know? it depends on how big it is. We can get a cubic shipping rate, or you can put it in a regional rate A box if it's, and it'll ship at the two pound rate if it oh, fits. It had to be like twenty pounds, right? Yeah. No, well, regional regional A is a fifteen pound limit. Yeah. So there's a lot of. I mean, you guys will learn the shipping side of this pretty quickly. So you can send some. Pretty heavy stuff. If you can fit it in a padded flat rate envelope, it's it sends for like seven eighty or something like that. So anyway, yeah. we're gonna sell this one twenty five dollars to who's got it? Rob, Rob Bowman, and Rob does say he's interested in fishing stuff. Okay. So maybe yeah. next week we'll have some of that, or the week after, or something like that. Yeah, I always uh, lean on Joe for that. I I've lived next to this lake my entire life. Yeah, never I know been on nothing. It. I've never been on it. I was. I've been, I've been on, on it once. I've been in canoes on the on the rivers and creeks and the streams and ponds, but never on the lake, <laughs> which is ridiculous. So, so, for those of you who don't know, we all live right on the shores of Lake Erie. All right, I'm going to bring you up, Mark, and this will be the final lot of the night. Because I'm getting tired, and I'm sure you guys are too. So this is my final lot for the night. It's uh, uh, I, I found a few of these. I thought I'd throw them in because I, I just thought they were cool. I actually found these today when I went back to the pick house, the, the one we got a lot of this from. And I, because uh, Steve had some, uh, what were those things called? The sublimation print? Well, they were actually just regular heat transfers, but... Transfer. And I, and I went back because I, I wasn't sure that Joe got them or not, and I just wanted to check. So And I lived just around the corner from it. And I saw these sitting on the floor. So I, you know, I picked them up. Maybe somebody could use them. Maybe somebody would think they're cool. Plus, I've got some car small car owner's manuals as well for this lot. So we'll start with these. These are, these are dated February of 1955. It's a photo fact folder for the RCA Victor model. There's like 10 models listed um so this would be the owner's manual for this particular i'll pull it i'll show you oh that's cool so now you know that these i mean how many of these tvs exist probably not very many if I any i think i might have that one upstairs <laughs> susie might have this in the triangle in the tv triangle <laughs> TV TV pyramid, yeah <laughs> what did i miss something <laughs> She used to stack her TVs. One one died. She'd stack another one on top. <laughs> <laughs> it's just TV oh, pure. Yeah, well, and the, it's the inside were joke. The it's the inside floor. joke. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's the. I mean, this is literally if your TV broke, this is the repair manual for it. Mm. I'll just pull. I'll go through this one real quick. I won't go through the other ones. Um, it's got the whole schematics, everything, in it. Pretty crazy for this and this is 1955 oh that's it, cool it's in this sucker is here's the schematics for it this sucker is in mint condition like this came out of the, the tv box so to speak it's uh here's the other side of it this is a good example of what lyle would keep and he and he uh go this way sorry i got you rob it's all there I have some friends in DC we, in the music industry 
that they dork out over stuff like this. Anything like tube related electronics, um, they just love looking at through this stuff, um, getting ideas how to fix this. You know, because we'll, if you're in your if you're in your 40s and under, you didn't deal with these kind of TVs. You you deal with you know the standard stuff that you can't even throw away at the dump, you know, in the dumpsters now. So um, it's just cool to look through it. A lot of the old radios. This is an old uh, ELCA Microcord Model XA100 radio. It's the same year. Yeah, this is dated 11 of 55. I think that's a cool piece. There's all kinds of different ones in here. So different radios from the era. Um, the different components. Here's the photo fact for whatever this is. This must be a switcher. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, just, I mean, just different electronics. It's all the owner's manuals from 1955 for whatever brand of stuff this was. Let's see what that one was. That's a that's a radio of so, yeah. It's a Westinghouse. Here's another radio. It's a Zenith model 15 or T5 T545. It's all there. Five dollars. This is, I mean, this is a lot in itself because a lot of these guys who fix this stuff, they have to go to the internet and download these PDFs. But they're downloading the PDFs. That's a digital file. They're not, they don't have the original piece of paper from that era that they can put along with that. I, I mean, I could go on and on. There's multiple ones of this, just different, different models, different companies. And uh, I'm assuming he is just a collector of all kinds of electronics. So that's that lot. This is the electronics, like um, schematics and owner's manuals for that. I got a few automotive-related stuff. I'll pull them out if I can. This one I can't pull out. I don't want to. It's still in the original package. 1989 Ram Dodge Ram van owner's manuals. Your dad had an, I think it was an 89. Or was it an 88? I'm sorry. I said 88. I said 89. This is, a, this no, is no, an 89. No. Your dad had an 83. Mini Ram. Yeah, the red one. Yep. The red one. I remember it. Um, I'm getting to that. I'm actually going to pull that up right now. So the 1985 truck and trailer car tow, car trailer towing guy, right? The Ram cool. 550. So this truck right here, we had this truck. Remember that? We had the 78. Was it a 78? I thought we had yeah, the 80s. 78. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, tell you, the body style didn't change much. It's 78 it power like. wagon. I just remember taking this truck over the tracks by the church. At like, It must have been probably 25 miles an hour, but it felt like 100 miles an hour. And we would track jump over it. <laughs> I just remember that shit. From the Maybe day. drag is it a ten? But that's, I mean, that is all there. That, yeah, that's that's, like, that's you, you got some money in that brochure. That's a I cool don't know one, how so. much, but it's some money. Those two there. Um, you find the owner's manual? It's never been open from the eighties. Yeah, that one's That's fun. crazy. Yeah. So this one has been open. It's a nineteen, but it's all there. It's a nineteen seventy eight Buick Skylark. Um, it's got a little bit of damage on the backside. I mean, that would have been Grandpa's car. Yeah. The I think that's Skylark. the one he wrecked. It was a 78 Skylark. Yeah. Uh, I'm not too into to cars, but I'd love to be. Um, but I appreciate all this old these older owner's manuals because they really told you about the car. They didn't, uh, you know, you didn't have to go to school for computer engineering or something to understand your car. Mm, never too old at 11. Just, a, just needed a just needed a toolbox and you could fix it. Yeah. Um, so this one, I don't I, I don't know this company, but I have been to this country. Um, I think this is the Netherlands. Um, Magnet. I've seen the logo before, but I don't know too much about is it. Is that a bicycle company or a motorcycle? So company? it's electric and gasoline motor bicycle company and motorcycle yeah. company. I've never heard um, of it. 
don't know. It's it, everything is in whatever language. I think that's it's either like, it's like Dutch or something. I don't know. Joe would be able to read it. Um, but the cool part is that these advertisements, it wasn't just about selling the, the, the bike. It was about the fashion of the time too. You know, if we if you flip through all of these bicycles, you're, it's like they're models standing with it. You know, yeah. they did not, it's very European of them. Everything has to be clean and pristine and sell the fashion along with it. Um, Here's the mini, so the magnet mini ABC with the little kids, like they like they just got many, it. For Christmas. I gotta look that one up. This one might these this still one, exist. Yeah, oh, I'd love this. I mean, you you actually get to look at this. These bikes are really cool. A lot of these are probably in the in the river. Yeah, if you type in magnet, it doesn't even come up with anything on eBay. It comes up with magnet yeah. because oh. There's an actual magnet bike frame. So here's a magnet um, kind of Vespa type type scooter. That might be what they're more known for is their scooters and motorcycles. Um, do this. I'm going backwards every time I do it. There's a head badge. Let me go this way. The stuff is collectible. I don't. The, oh, this is like learning how to drive. Any paperwork? You just. Uh, there's a head badge, a bell, another head badge. But I thought that was a cool one because it's the vintage stuff. I like that one. That's my favorite so far. Some some farm equipment uh, catalogs from 1947. Still little, at 11 with never too old. Little tiny, uh, looks like a, there was a sticker or something stuck to it. This is 1947. So if you're a farmer, it would be a catalog that you might... You might get sent to your house. Um, they'll sell you the paint, paint your barns. And then they'd sell you your, you know, seeds. Maybe at 15. Seeds and everything. I mean, you got, it's literally like all of your commodity farm related one. Um, the last of this lot is old DuPont. These are 1961. I think one is 64. Yeah. These are the DuPont refinisher guides for cars. Oh. So I thought they were cool. Car guys would love this put in their little showcases. Here's oh, a that's cool. example. I'm going to get to the one real quick because I don't want to waste much time here. There were some paint chips in that stuff too. Those. That's what I'm getting paint to chips. here. Paint chips are valuable. Yeah. So I got paint chips in this lot. So this is an import guide. Um, it's just, again, it's just, it just tells the, the data for the year. Every what single make and model had the paint guide for it. So you didn't have to go to what the, year is that Mark? This one's 1960 imported cars tells all the dealerships that deal. Now this is the one with paint chips in it. That's important stuff uh, for people who want to restore this shit. Yeah, this is, this tells you the exact. Uh, ones. So this is the automotive refinishing colors for 1964 DuPont company. Here's all the lists. You got, you know, your Chevy, Dodge, GMC, Ford, but you also got some Studebaker stuff in there, international, blah, blah, blah. So in here, I mean, it's literally full of paint chips. The actual paint chips are in this thing. And this was kept in a filing cabinet. So it was, it's not like, you know, there's a little bit of humidity stuff going on with it but it's not folded there's no creases and it's every make and model for 64 that dupont made colors for the, the actual paint chips are here and they're the real ones they're not painted on there it's like a little tiny it feels almost like a piece of metal or maybe it's plastic i've seen just for well there's a 1964 chrysler plymouth dodge for 14 dollars. so just that piece there yeah at least Fifteen dollar piece or more. Yeah, I imagine this is where the money is in this lot. If if you're a reseller, like in the paint chip thing, um, we'll go through them pretty. You know, try to get some them. some paint chips can go outrageously high. Yeah, I, I mean, I have that here in another lot. I have 
household paint chips yeah. from mid-century modern houses and stuff. That's from a different house. Be, though. Maybe next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't, don't know. Fifteen AB Dragons is at fifteen dollars. We're gonna we're gonna start counting this one down. Yeah, fifteen. So bucks. you've got your nineteen fifty-five service manuals and owners manuals for you know everything from Zenith to brands I've never heard of. Westinghouse, you've got in there. Um, some TVs I haven't seen, and I've seen tried. You know, I try to keep my eye on all those things. Old electronics. Sixteen to Rob Bowman. Um, 17 to AB Dragons. The but again, I think here here is the. I think your color this, information stuff. With the chips in there still. Yeah. The the only damage on here, and it's not even damage. It's just a little dog ear here in the in the staple, is a little bit of a watermark. But I mean, what is this? 1964. I think that it is, survived pretty damn well. That's almost mint condition for Rob Bowman's in a 20. So paint chips are cool. I always come across them and, and uh, a lot of times they're so damaged because people I didn't don't. save this stuff. So uh, with the, with the other uh, brochure, was it the other paint thing? I think you got some money there, but I don't, I mean, I don't know, but that's pretty cool. Oh, Rob Bowman was born in 64, and it is the current high bidder. Born in 64. Well, this is the guy who was painting your car in 64. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> $20 going once. I think it's a cool lot. I I love old paper. I don't yeah. like to sell it, but I love to look at it. So yeah, that's I why think. when I bring old paper, it, it goes straight to this auction. I don't even try. But. There's a few yeah. occasions I'll sell it, but it's crazy when you see like a 1985 Dodge. I mean, this must have come from the dealership, right? I would like, guess it's yeah. something that you would get as an add-on or an added feature at that time. One of those brochures in the rack that you could pick up on your way out. And the fact that he took it home and put it in an envelope and stuck it in a filing cabinet is crazy to me. That it's just never seen any light until what four days ago. Yeah. It looks like it came off the it's dealer probably shelf. been in there since the 80s. Yeah. yeah. Based on this guy. Price. Last chance, folks, to get something from tonight's auction. Mark is going to sell this. Is that Borax? Yeah. Oh. Got some Do More. I got some Borax. This is some... I told Ron the other day this was for... Uh, this is preparation age because it says analgesic. <laughs> you believe me? I tried to get you him to rub me. it on his butt. <laughs> <laughs> this one's all cool. Right. This one here. This one here is really cool. It's white lead and it's all there. I'm pretty sure that like, can's worth some good money. Uh, it's toxic waste. It weighs so much. Just holding this has got to be five pounds just for this I'm can. I'm pretty sure that particular one is worth something. All right, yeah. twenty dollars, and we're gonna sell it. Sold. Uh, that one went to uh, Rob Bowman. So we are done with the auction for tonight. Let me get us all on screen here. I'm going to go back up top. Joe, you got dark. I got yeah. dark. Oh, yeah, dark. oh the you're light. supposed to be in bed. But, oh, man. Look at that mess behind me. You guys are seeing my secrets. There's uh, all those puzzles. Uh, in that house, this guy had blank puzzles and my oh, sublimation yeah. printer, I can print on them. So, this is what they're just blank puzzles. So, I'll be printing some puzzles out. I think that was part of a get rich quick scheme thing. I think so too. He had a lot of that kind of stuff printing he stuff. Did. I mean, some of those, I, I know you probably guys didn't have time to go through those uh, heat transfers, but some of them are pretty cool. Definitely no, early, I, late 70s, early 80s shit. So, yeah. Um, and the heat, the heat transfer uh, was there. The the machine or the yeah. tool. Actually, uh, AB, I probably will make the same design on those puzzles as I have on the masks. So we'll see. I they do have a little bit of a musty smell, so I'm gonna have to get that out of there because they've been in a garage. But they were in a garage, but the garage was a clean garage. Yeah, clean. As far as, as obviously, when something sits out in a garage for a while, it's gonna 
It wasn't mm -hmm. like a dirty, dirt everywhere garage. But anyway, that's it for tonight. Um, you guys can catch me in the morning on the Bearded Picket Mor the Bearded Picker Morning Show. I don't even know if that's what it's called, but on the Bearded Picker Live channel. Um, you can catch Mark and Joe next week, I hope, on this auction. Uh, guys, tell everybody you know. I mean, we want to make this thing a little bit, you know, better for everybody. And the yeah, more people that show up, the better the auction's going to be for everybody. And so, yeah, and I think, and I have, I think we have a good we thing have, going here. We have so much different stuff. I don't know what to sell on these things because I'm just getting used to this. Well, you you, know? you learned a few it's lessons. You you learned a few lessons tonight. And you learned what's good and, and some of the things that aren't as good. So, but you know, that's, it's a learning process. I'm still learning what's, what's going to sell on these types of auctions as well. So, yeah. yeah. But I enjoy it. I enjoy every minute. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast and uh, see you guys in the morning and uh, Thursday morning. And then again, Wednesday night, if you don't know, uh, Scott has his auction tomorrow night on the regular bearded picker channel. Eight o'clock Eastern. All right, so I got to figure out how to end this broadcast. I always have problems ending the broadcast, so here we go. Good night, everybody.